الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم يا مفتح الأبواب ويا مسبب الأسباب ويا دليل الحائرين توكلت عليك يا رب العالمين وفوض عمري لله إن الله بصير بالعباد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين إن الله الإسلام صدق الله صدق الله العظيم My dear brethren Before I get deep into the subject I would just like to recall the MC had called out a name, actually three names. He had called out Reverend Ronnie de Souza of the Roman Catholic Church. If this Reverend is in the hall, we would be very happy if he identifies himself. Reverend Ronnie de Souza, please lift up your hand if you are here in the audience. Hey, Mojud hey, Reverend Ronnie D'Souza. Oh, Mr. Emmanuel Sharifi. Is he here? And Joseph Hira Singh of the Sin Christian Welfare Association. These three gentlemen, if they are here, please identify yourself. Then I can address you. They are not here. You see these three gentlemen, this ho holy trinity or unholy trinity, three in one. <laughs> silence, silence, silence please, silence please. This Reverend Ronnie, please, 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 keep quiet. This Reverend Ronnie D'Souza of the Roman Catholic Church from here, Maryville in Karachi, he had sent me a cutting with certain things underlined. In other words, he wanted me to answer them. So the reason for calling out the name was that if he was present here, he would have been the first gentleman to be given the opportunity to ask those questions, which he had given in the shape of a cutting from a newspaper. He's not here. So there is no sense me, me wasting my time over those questions. Then, in the Jung newspaper dated yesterday, there was an article by Emmanuel Sharifi and Joseph Hira Singh. These two gentlemen, they are challenging me to public debates throughout Pakistan. They want to appear on Pakistan TV. They want to debate with me in places like Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad and all over. Therefore I asked if they were here, then I could have addressed them. And since they are not here, but I might give you the message, what it is all about. They want to debate me. Who is this Emmanuel Sharifi? And who is this Joseph Hira Singh? Please have patience, otherwise this thing can't continue. Have patience. Jara sabar karan se so these gentlemen, they wanted to debate with me. People I don't know, they have any worth. Whether they are Mr. or Reverend or Rabbi or what are they, I don't know. They just get into the press, they want to debate. I said, look, people like His Holiness the Pope. His Holiness the Pope. Pope, Papa, Baba, from Rome. He had cold feet. Then when I was in America, I offered the American evangelist, tele-evangelist, like Jimmy Swaggart, who appears on 2,000 TV stations of the world. 2,000 TV stations of the world. People like him, Billy Graham, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, people of some words, some substance. I offered them $10,000 per meeting. I said, look, I offer you four meetings in the United States at my expense, and I give you $10,000 each just to come along and talk to me. Have a dialogue with me. $10,000, $40,000 for four meetings. 
and they all had cold feet. Now these little, we are saying overgrown puppies, overgrown puppies. <laughs> they want to challenge me. They want to get that vicarious pleasure of telling the world that me too, I too, you know, stood up against Mr. D. Dad. Just like we saw in the dawn this morning, this morning's dawn, the great fighter Muhammad Ali, his picture is there in the dawn of today, with a schoolboy, and the schoolboy is sparring with Muhammad Ali. Now, this schoolboy is immortalized. Can you see? Just for standing up against Muhammad Ali. We know Muhammad Ali, just a little swipe, and the poor fellow will faint, you know, he might die. But he can tell his children, and his children's children, you know, Muhammad Ali, the greatest boxer that, that was ever produced in history, is when he came to Lahore, and I had it out with him. <laughs> so, these overgrown puppies, you know, hot gospelers, Bible thumpers, everybody wants to have a go at D that. At least they can say that I stood up for him. I said, look, bring me your bishop, the bishop of Karachi, whether Anglican or Roman Catholic or Presbyterian or Lutheran, whatever you have. Or bring me your godfathers. You know, godfathers, in English, godfathers mean people who are your real guardians. Some white man, a bishop from England, or some of these mighty you know, creatures from America, and I am prepared to pay the first class fare and hotel expenses. If there are any Christians here, please pass this message on to your community that be that is ever ready. Just get me something nice. Something that I can chew and something my size. I don't want to battle with little puppies. Please. Just don't harass me. However, now, the subject. The subject. The subject. The subject as announced is Islam and Christianity. I would rather put it Christianity and Islam. You know why? Because Christianity preceded Islam by 600 years. Christianity and Islam. And if you allow me to do that, I want to take a little more advantage in putting Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Look, these three religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, are sister religions. They have a common heritage. All these three religions go back to Father Abraham, Father Ibrahim alayhi salam. And as, as such, there is certain affinity, relationship. We can say that these three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, are actually the teachings of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad is the same. And in the verse that the Qari read, our Qari this evening, he recited a surah in which he read, Inna dina in the Islam. Which means, most certainly, the religion, the way of life, the deen, acceptable in the sight of Allah, is Islam. Another place Allah says, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ That if they want a religion other than Islam, it will not be accepted from them. وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاصِرِينَ And in the hereafter, they will be of the losers. So if Islam is the only religion acceptable by Allah, then what about Judaism and Christianity? And I'm telling people there is no such thing as Judaism or Christianity. Really, there is no such thing. You see, these are labels. These are labels created by man. It's man-made titles. This was Judaism, which we mean, we understand, is a religion followed by the children of Judah, actually the religion of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That is what we think. That Judaism is a religion of the people of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And Christianity is a religion of the people of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. But really not so. There was no such thing as Judaism and there was no such thing as Christianity. You see in this holy book, the Christian Bible, they call it the Holy Bible. In this book, there is no word in this whole encyclopedia of 73 books here of the Roman Catholics 
and 66 books in this Bible of the Protestants, Christians, the word Judaism is not there. It's non-existent. The word Christianity is non-existent. I'm asking the Jew. You can do the same if you meet a Jew. He said, excuse me, sir. This word Judaism, is it in your Torah? They'll tell you no. Is it in the Mithna? He says, no. Is it in the Talmud? He says, no. Then where did you get it? If it's not in all your books of authority, like the word Islam. Suppose somebody asks you, where did you get the word Islam from? I say, look, it's in the Quran. It's in the Hadiths. You see, Islam is the name of the deen that we follow. Your deen, you say, is Judaism. Is it in your most authoritative books? The Torah, he says, no. In the Talmud, he says, no. In the Mishnah, he says, no. So where did you get it? And watch him. He'll stare at you. He will stare at you. He doesn't know where he got the word Judaism from. So the word Judaism is not to be found in any religious scripture of the Jews. Where did it come from? See, it comes from the word Judah. Judah or Huda, from which we get the word Yehuda, Yehudi. Judah was the eldest son of Hazrat Yaqub a.s. And when the Jews, the Israelis, Bani Israel, when they conquered Palestine, Palestine was divided among the tribes. There were 12 tribes, 12 sons of Yaqub a.s. In history, they became 12 tribes and Palestine was divided among the tribes. The children of Levi, so you occupy this space. Children of Judah, you occupy that space. And so on, it was divided. So the people from the outside, seeing that the type of religion that these children were practicing, they said that the religion followed by the children of Judah in Judea, that's the land they call it Judea, is Judaism. So they liked the term and they accepted it. Like in sort of Islam, you might say the religion of Islam of, this, of Pakistan is Pakistanism, which is not so. But like that, they invented the term Judaism. The word Christianity also is not to be found anywhere in the Bible. The first time this term was used, Christian, was again used by the enemies of the followers of Jesus at a place called Antioch. The enemies, disparagingly, they pointed to these followers of Jesus and they said that these are Christians, meaning the worshippers of Christ. But if Hazrat Musa a.s. was accessible to us, if we can get close enough to him and if we could ask him, O oh Musa a.s., what is your religion? We expect him to say that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. My religion is a religion of total submission to the will of Allah. That's his religion. And one word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. The name of his religion is Islam. Judaism is a concoction, is a creation, an invention of man. If Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, in his second coming, if we could approach him and ask him, O oh Isa alayhi salam, what is your religion? We are not expected to hear from him Christianity. If he said Christianity, we could ask him, what are you sir? Are you a Roman Catholic? Or are you a Methodist? Are you a Protestant? Are you a Seventh-day Adventist? Are you a Jehovah's Witness? What are you? What church? It's ridiculous. We expect him to say that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. And one word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. So therefore, Allah says, in his sight, there is only one religion. That religion is a religion of total submission to Allah's will, which is Islam. The relationship between the teachings of the prophets of these three religions, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, and our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi salam, in the fundamental, no difference. 100% the same. In the fundamental. You see, the first commandment, we say the awwal kalima. The first commandment given by Allah Ta'ala to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam in the Hebrew language, in the language of the Jews, is Shama Israelu Adonai Elohainu Adonai Echa, which means, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's the awwal kalima Hazrat Musa alayhi salam gave his people. That 
اللہ باری تعالیٰ واہ دہو لا شریک ہی از دا ون این اونلی سم تھرٹین ہنڈریڈ ایئرز آفٹر حضرت موسا علیہ السلام اے جوئش لرنڈ مین گوز ٹو حضرت عیسیٰ علیہ السلام اینڈ کوشچن ہم سیٹ او جیزس وٹ کمانڈمنٹ از دا فرسٹ آف آل میننگ وٹ از دا اول کلیما ان جیزس آنسرز اینڈ سیز اینڈ ٹو ہم ان دا ہی برو لینگویج شما اسرا عید ادنا الحین ادنا اخد which means hero israel the lord of god the lord is one hazrat musa alay salam said ikhad hazrat isa alay salam said ikhad one and only one and only some 600 years after jesus a christian deputation comes to our nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they had a dialogue in the masjid al nabawi for three days and three nights during the course of the discussion the spokesman for the christian poses the question all right all right now tell us o muhammad What is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is made to say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, He is God the one and only. Hazrat Musa alayhi wa sallam said, Ikhad. Hazrat Isa alayhi wa sallam said, Ikhad. Our Nabi said, Ahad. What is the difference? It's the same word meaning the same thing. You see, Arabic and Hebrew are sister languages. Ally. We say, Salam, they say, Shalom. We say, Ahad, they say, Ikhad. We say Yom Al Juma. They say Yom, Yom, Yom. It's the same language, different dialect. So, same in the fundamental of the teachings of the prophets, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, and our Nabi Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the same. What is the difference then? The difference now is in the Sharia, the laws. And Allah Bari Ta'ala gave laws according to the needs of the time. Any community according to the needs, they gave laws. This Bani Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they were moving in the Sinai Peninsula from oasis to oasis. A community who is a wandering people, they need a law that will give them quick justice. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. There was no time for lengthy litigation, court actions, court laws, cases. There's no time for putting a man in prison. An adulterer says, stone him to death. There was no wasting time. It's, what you're going to do, put him in prison? There's no prison. Leave him behind in the desert or die of hunger and thirst. It was more merciful to stone him to death and he becomes an object lesson for others. A beautiful law for a nomadic people. And in history, when Isa alayhi salam came, he came to give new laws, new directions, and new applications of the law to his people. is the same system on a different level islam is the culmination is the highest point reached in the teachings of the religions as the systems as given by allah bari taala to the prophets now today there is a confrontation between the jews and the christians and the muslims and allah bari taala tells us walan tarqa ankal yahudu walan nasara that the Jews and the Christians will never, never be satisfied with you Muslims unless you follow the brand of religion. They say, وَقَالُوا They say, who the Jews and the Christians? لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُدًا أَوْ نَسَارًا That you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. In answer to that, Allah says, Tilka amani yuhum. That this is the wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucination, bakwas e bakwas. Pull! Keh do imku. Tell them how to burhan up. Produce your proof, your evidence. Burhan. In kuntum sadiqin. If you are speaking the truth, let us have a look at your certificate. That entitles you to heaven and destines us to hell. Dekhe to sahi da kaha hai tumare paas ho. O fatwa to ba. Allah ke. Allah ne diya hai. Let's have a look. So the Christians... In Christianity and Islam, the main difference. We believe, they say there is one God, we say there is one God. The Jew says there is one God, the Hindu says that there is one God. Everyone says that God is one. But my Hindu cousins, my ancestors were Hindus. My Hindu cousins, I asked them, who is Rama? He says, it's God. I said, who is Krishna? He says, God. I said, who is Sita? Well, she's a goddess. A goddess, God. I said, who is Siva? She says, God. Who is Ganesh? She says, God. Who is Hanuman? She says, God. Who is Parvati? She is a goddess. Shh. But I thought you said just now there is one God. He said, yes. But you give me man gods, you give me woman gods, you give me animal gods. No, no. The poor man is confused. No, he's confused. You see, he doesn't know. 
what he is trying to say is that the same God came as Rama in his seventh incarnation, seventh time that God came down to earth, he came as Rama, eighth time he came as Krishna, ninth time he came as Buddha, the tenth time he came as Kalanka Avatar, the eleventh time he came as Mahatma Gandhi, and on and on. They are prepared, they are prepared to believe in endless incarnation, God becoming a man. They believe in the system that God becomes a man. The Christians, you see the Hindu believes in many God incarnates, Allah becoming man, insan. The Christian says that before Jesus, God did not incarnate. He didn't take human form. After Jesus, he will not incarnate. He is the only incarnation. The only time Allah became a human being, he came in the form of Jesus Christ. The Muslim says, God does not incarnate at all. He does not become man at all. What he does is, he chooses a man from among men, one of us, flesh and blood in all respects. But that person is so finely attuned, he is so sincere to God, Allah that whatever Allah commands him on a higher spiritual level, what we call revelation, the electromagnetic waves of the spiritual world, that person reproduces them faithfully. We say he is the prophet of God, he is the mouthpiece of God, he is speaking the word of God, but he is not God. Such a person was Moses, was Dawood, David, Solomon, Jesus, Muhammad. We know numerous by name and there were others about whom we don't know. But now the main competitors for the hearts and minds of mankind are the Jew, I'm sorry, are the Christians and the Muslims. Islam claims to be a universal religion and the Christian claims the religion also to be universal for mankind. So there is a competition between these two. The Jews have fallen out of the race. They are not interested in converting anybody. They have made the religion a racial religion. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. If you insist and if they accept you willy-nilly, and if you are converted, you are still a third grade Jew. They don't want you. They only want from us political recognition. You just believe and accept what they tell you that Palestine belongs to them, there will be peace between us and the Jews. It's political, not religious, not racial. With the Christian, of course, the Christian says salvation, Rahin Ajat, only comes through the blood of the Lord Jesus. So in their teaching, there are three main things with which we disagree. Number one, they believe in the original sin. They believe in the divinity of Christ, that Isa a.s. was himself Khuda, God. And they believe that he died for the sins of mankind. Three things. Original sin, the divinity of Christ, and his crucifixion. These are the three main points. Now, this is like a house of cards. A house of cards. You know, you have three cards. You just put the three cards like this, and you make a little triangle, a house. You take one, the other thing, two falls. It can't stand. A house of cards, three, if you take any one of them away, the whole house falls. Christianity falls. You take any one of these three out of that structure of Christianity, Christianity is of no consequence. Number one, the original sin. They say, and we agree, that Allah created Adam alayhi salam and Mahawah. And he put them in the garden. Jannat. Jannatul Firdaus. And Allah told them, eat anything, everything in the garden, except, according to the Bible I'm reading, this is the tree in the midst of the garden, that fruit thou shalt not eat. Because the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So shaitan tells them, according to the Bible, he says, look, that tree, that fruit is very good to eat. And if you eat, you shall never die. Allah says, that day you shall, most, you shall surely die. Shaitan says, you shall not surely die. And the Bible tells us, Adam alayhi salam and Mahawah live for 950 years. Who's speaking the truth? The God of the Bible or Shaitan? It seems Shaitan was speaking the truth. Okay? Unless God was bluffing. He was just trying to frighten them. I'll kill you. But he didn't mean it. And they act, according to the Bible, they act. And this was supposed to be the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So immediately they act, they became aware that they were naked. Prior to that, they were masu, masu. They were grown up people. 
like us, like me, not old like me, but they were grown up people, perhaps must be about, I don't know what age could that be, I can't imagine. So they were grown up people, but they did know that they were naked. Kenangete. You know, masum, masum yeti. As soon as they act, they realize ke kenange hai. So they started plucking leaves. The Bible says, I'm only talking from the Bible. They started plucking leaves to cover themselves up. And the Bible says that Adam and Eve, they heard Suna of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, in the late afternoon. You know, God Almighty walking. Can you imagine? You know, you might have seen that film King Kong. King Kong was too small. Mm. You know how big he is? Astaghfirullah. Look, this is the concept. They have an idea that God is like a man. He's millions and millions of times bigger than man, but something like a man. So even something like a man is walking in the garden and Adam hears the footsteps, you can imagine. And the whole earth must be shaking. Boom, 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 boom. So they hide themselves in the bushes. Now this is what the Holy Bible says. They hid themselves in the bushes. So God Almighty, Allah Ta'ala comes and stands where Adam and Eve were a few seconds before. And he's scanning, looking around. He can't see them. He can't find them. No, no, that's what the Bible says. No, no, you must know. This is what the Bible says. So now he can't find them. So he says, Adam, Adam, where are thou? Kaha hai? Maybe he didn't know. Or maybe he's playing hide and seek. You know, I play with my grandchild. I have a grandson about three and a half, four year old. So I go home and he's happy to see his grandpa. But I start, say, Rais, Rais, tu kache? Where are you? Rais, kaha hai? You may dekta hu, idhar, udhar dekta hu. And he thinks I can't see him. You know that? He enjoys it, you see? <laughs> because I'm looking all over. As if Rais is there. Where? Maybe I play hide and seek. I don't know whether you play hide and seek with your children. So maybe Allah Baritala also want to have a little fun. You know, so he says, <laughs> Beta to kaha hai. So he peeped through the bushes. Bushes may say, you know, very, very frightened, you know. He said, why do you behave like that? That's not the way to behave. What are you afraid of me for? He said, no, I was naked. So who told you you were naked? You have been eating that fruit. She so said, you know, the woman that that gave us to me, she made me to eat. If it wasn't for this woman you gave me, you gave me that woman. If you didn't give me the woman, I wouldn't be in trouble. He curses them, lanat. So you man, from now on, you must sweat for your bread. So we are all sweating, you know why? Because what Adam and Islam did. Otherwise, we'd all be in the Jannah. You want grapes? Hmm. What do you want? You want lamb chop? Hmm. What do you want? Jo kuch hona hai, marzi ke mutabik, you know, milta hota. But we are all sweating, sweating. Somebody is sweating more than others, but we all sweat for our bread. Why? Because of what Adam and Eve did. And you woman? He says, you must bear children in pain and suffering. I'm asking. This Christian theology. I say, is that not enough? This man and this woman made a mistake. You kick him out of the garden. Is that not enough? No, says the Christian theology. It's not enough. That's not enough. Now he must curse them. And he curses the man and the woman. And his children. Forever now we got to sweat. And the woman... Forever she must bear children in pain and suffering. Is that not enough? Hmm? Not yet. He said, each and every creature on earth must go to hell. Jahannam mein jayega. Kyu? Because of the original sin. What Adam and Eve did, now we, that sin has in, we inherited it. Hamare varse mein aaya hai. Each and every one has got that contamination, says the Christian. And you can't remove it by individual effort. No matter how many times you pray, how you fast whole year, it, does, it, it won't help you. That stain is on your root. And the only way you can remove it is, you believe that Christ died for your sins. They, he blames you for something that you didn't do. And he blesses you for what somebody else did, if at all. You know? So, and they're getting converts. Amazing situation. It's the most nonsensical religion on earth. So come talk to me. Come talk to me. I'm talking to the Christian. I said, look, man, you. Did Adam ask you before eating the apple? He says, no. I said, your wife. Did Eve ask her before eating the apple? He says, no. 
Then I say, how can God hold you responsible? If I hold you something responsible for something what your grandfather did, hmm, and I take revenge, I kill you for what your great grandfather did to my great grandfather. And I put a knife through you. They'll catch me. I say, yeah, I killed him. So why? He said, his great grandfather killed my great grandfather. You know they won't hang me. They can't hang me. They said, this guy's mad. He needs a psychiatrist. No, he's got a in him. Bichara, look, how can you hold this man responsible? He's a mad. He's a loony. He's a lunatic. This man is a lunatic. I'm asking, is God a loony? Yeah? He's going to hold me responsible for what Adam did and what Eve did. But you see, they're talking, talking, they're selling. And there's a saying that a fool is born every minute. A fool is born every minute. If you want to sell, you keep on talking, talking, you can sell anything. Hamare bear bohat mithe. Hamare bear bohat mithe. Now man kitna khatta hota hai, there will be some fool going and buy it. This is man. We have a saying, bole tena borwe chai. Whoever speaks, he sells his bear. Now mind how sour they are. But the guy selling, selling, and he's getting converse. But Major Yeats Brown, Major Yeats Brown, a Britisher, he wrote a book called The Life of a Bengal Lancer in India. Life of a Bengal Lancer, in which he says, he says, no heathen tribe has ever conceived so grotesque an idea, filthy, dirty, ugly idea, involving as it does the assumption that man was born with a hereditary stain upon him and that this stain for which he was not personally responsible was to be atoned for and that the creator of all things had to sacrifice his only begotten son to neutralize this mysterious curse. He says, no heathen tribe has ever conceived such a filthy, dirty, ugly, nonsensical idea. But the white man, the westerner, who lands on the moon, who's got the world in the palm of his hand, he can tell you what's going on. He warned the Pakistanis about the Bay of Bengal tragedy. So look, there's a tidal wave coming. coming. But East Pakistan, our brother in there, they took it too lightly and hundreds of thousands more people died. They warned the Jews. In 1973, he says the Arabs are on the move. They are like gods watching what's going on with their electronic devices, with their satellites. Now that guy can't be wrong, can he be? No. We suffer from inferiority complexes. The white bass, Gora Sahib, kuch wrong ho sakta hai? Hmm? The, in my country, the African is worshipping the white man. The colored is worshipping the white man. The Indian is worshipping the white man. He's like a god. He ruled us for a handful of them. Four million are ruling 25 million people. And we can do nothing about it. A handful of British has ruled this subcontinent. Millions of people. And you couldn't do anything about it. So, how you feel? Oh, Bada Sahab, Pakka Sahib, Gora Sahib. So, whatever he says, he can't be wrong. You can't challenge him. Now, we say sin is not inherited. Sin is an acquisition. After reaching a certain stage, the individual, boy or girl, he becomes responsible or she becomes responsible for his or her action. Allah says, Allah tazidu wazratum wizra ukhra. And no bearer of a burden bears the burden of another. Everyone that is born is masoom, is sinless. Whether in the home of a Hindu, a Christian or a Jew or an atheist or an agnostic, the child is innocent. And if that child dies before the age of discussion, that child goes to heaven. That is our belief. This is, they say, sin inherited. We say, no, it's not inherited. You acquire it. Number two, the divinity of Christ. They say that Jesus is God. He is God Almighty in human form. Allah came down to earth as a man. He was born to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in the stable some 2,000 years ago. God came down. He stayed in his mother's womb for nine months. Maryam, alayhi salam. And the Bible says in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 23, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised. When he was eight days old, he was circumcised. And named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. The market pet me the job finished and I can have his can I'm is that now so we are asking who was in his mother's womb he said Jesus who is Jesus this is his God and the son of God so he was in his mother's womb he said yes so how did he come out from there so like you and me he said how how 
خداوند تعالی عورت کے پیٹ سے پیدا ہوتا ہے سپوز یو ایر نرس ٹو تھاؤزینڈ ایئرس ان دس ٹیبل اینڈ یو ہیلپنگ میری ٹو ڈیلیور دا چائلڈ کین یو فار ون مومنٹ تھنگ دیٹ ہیلپ پلس لٹل کریچر از یور گاڈ یور جہوبا یور اللہ نو دا مائنڈ سیز نو وین یو سی دی ہیلپ پلس لٹل کریچر اینی ہیومن چائلڈ See, you can strangle the child. You know, you can do what you like with the child. That child, as he's growing, is drinking milk from his mother's breast. He is wetting his napkins. Any child, whether it's a Moses or a Jesus or a Muhammad, you drink milk, you wet your napkins. You eat food, you must excrete. You have a call of nature. Whether the toilet or the bush or the rocks, you have to run behind it. Now mind, whether you are a Moses or a Jesus or a Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessing be upon them all. This is human. And Allah Bari Ta'ala tells in the Quran, this quality, this quality, that anyone who eats food can never be your God. Anyone. Sammal Masihu ibn Maryama illa Rasul. More directly to Jesus. Because they say he is God. And there are people, the Roman Catholic, they worship his mother Mary as the mother of God. Sammal Masihu ibn Maryama illa Rasul. The most certainly Masih, the son of Mary, is no more than a messenger. Kad khalat min kablihi rusul. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. Wa ummuhu siddiqa. And his mother was a virtuous woman, a good woman, a holy woman, a pious woman. Wa ummuhu siddiqa. Kana ya'kulani ta'am. And they both had food. And they both had food. So, so what? We all eat food. So no, no, no. They both had food. And the people said that they're God. They worship Jesus as God. They worship Maryam as the mother of God. So Allah says they both eat food. Kana unzur. Kaifan mubayinu lahum ulayati. So see how we make our signs clear to you. Kaisa hum samjate hai. Kaisa asani se samjate hai. Unzur. Dekho. How we make things clear to you. Allah says. سُمَّنْزُرْ أَنَّا يُفِكُونَ So have another look. دوبارہ دیکھو. How they have drifted away from the path. دوبارہ دیکھو. کیا دیکھیں? They are both at food. This is so what? No. No. Allah is drawing your attention to something more serious than that. You see, he says, اُنْزُرْ سُمَّنْزُرْ دیکھو. دوبارہ دیکھو. He won't tell you the way I'm going to tell you, where I tell you, the way we speak. He probably khana khate the, sandas ki hajjat hoti thi. No, no, no. Allah Bari Ta'ala is sublime, is holy. He doesn't talk like that. But we have to. When you are talking to the man, he says, look, they had food. He says, yes. Then they had a call of nature. They had to run to the toilet. And if there's no toilet, they run behind the bush. No. He's got to say yes. How can God run behind the bush looking for toilets, man? There are samjo, socho. No, no, Allah is giving us it. Wallah, He is giving it to you. But we don't use it because we don't know that it's there. He is giving you all the arguments. Kaisa baat karna uske saath? He is telling you, He is teaching you in the Quran. This book is giving you everything. You don't need my cleverness, your cleverness, the Molly's cleverness. You don't need that. This book is answering all your problems. This is Jesus is God. Because Allah is His Father. Why? He said, you see, he had no father. I said, yes. He was born miraculously. Mojisa. Allah ka mojisa. Allah karne chata hai. Wa iza qada amran fa inna ma yakulu lahu kun fa yakun. Jo kuch paida karne chata hai. He just says kun ho ja aur ho jata hai. That's what we believe. For him to create just like that. He said, no. Everybody must have a father. You got a father? You got a father? Everybody got a father. Then what about Jesus? He must also have a father. So if you can't show a father that his father is God. So Allah tells us, so, Inna masala Isa inda Allahi kamasali Adama. The similitude or the example of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam. Khalakahu min turabin. He made him from dust. Thumma qala lahu kun fayakun. Then he said be and he was. So if Jesus is God and the son of God because he's got no father, then Adam is a greater God because he had no father and no mother. (laughs) 
No, no, this is all Quran. It's a stand to reason, man. Stand to reason. If a man has got no father, then his father is God. Then he's got no father and no mother. Then father and mother is God. He's greater. He said, no, 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 no. He was made from dust. And Jesus was born. I said, look, man, you see, Allah says, Allah says, a system, the best system you can use is قُلْ حَاتُوا بُرْحَالَكُمْ You remember, I read just now, when they say that you Muslims are going to go to Jahannam and they're going to go to Jannah, Allah says, دِلْ كَمَانِ يُهُمْ This is the wishful thinking, بَقْوَاسَ بَقْوَاسَ مَدْ دَرْنَا قُلْ كَهْدَ أُنْكُوا حَاتُوا بُرْحَالَكُمْ Produce your proof. إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِكِينَ So they produce the proof, the Bible, in 2,000 different languages. What language you like to read? Any language. Urdu, they got it. Gujarati, they got it. Sindhi, they got it. What language you want to read? Gurmukhi, they got it. Come on, come on. 2,000 different languages. He said, my Bible says this, my Bible says that. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. Allah says, ask for proof. Burhan, and they produced it. What are you going to do? Swallow it? No. When Allah commands us to demand proof, it presupposes that when proof is produced, you'll be able to analyze it. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Analyze it. So, we analyze the book. Have a look at it. We must have a look at it. To know what he's talking about. This is the book of authority. As soon as the Quran says this, he said, where did you get the Quran? He said, well, Allah revealed it to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He said, look, Muhammad, <laughs> you know, he has so many wives. <laughs> a man like that, a man of God, you know, he spread his religion at the point of the sword. He was threatening people. If you don't accept Islam, chop off your head. He said, you know, he copied his book, the Quran, from the Jews and the Christians. So they start attacking the Prophet Wasallam. they start attacking the Quran, they start attacking Islam. I said, brothers and sisters, the Quran is too holy for bringing it into the battlefield. Leave it there on the shelf. Not in the battle. But don't leave it there for good. You have to bring it down and know what it is. But in the battle, you put the Quran there. He said, now where is your authority? He said, this is my authority. Qul hatu burhanakum. So he produces burhan, his proof. So I said, let's have a look. I said, look, in the book called Hebrews, this Bible has got 66 books. What you might say, surahs, they've got books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Hebrews, Peter, James. Books, books, books. These are names I'm just giving you from the book, this encyclopedia. So there is a book inside called the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. It says, Melchizedek. He speaks about a man called Melchizedek. Malik, Salik, Saleh, Sadek. Melchizedek in Hebrew. Melchizedek. The high priest of Salem. The Bada Alim Tam or Molvi. The high priest, Bada Imam of Salem. Salam. Salam Kratka Jagahogi Kuch. He was a great man, learned man. The high priest of Salem. Without father, without mother, without beginning. Without end. This is what his book says. The Christian book. Every Bible in the world says that. Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem, said Abraham, Abraham, Abraham alayhi salam, gave him tithes, one tenth of his zakat he was giving him, one tenth of all zakat. Ten percent of everything Abraham alayhi salam had he was giving to this man as a priest. He was going to collect all the zakat. In the time of Abraham alayhi salam. He was a man. This man had no father, no mother. No beginning, no end. So I said, look, Jesus had a mother. This man had no mother and no father. Who is greater? Jesus had a beginning in the stable and an apparent end. So he had an end, an apparent end. He had a beginning in the stable and he had an end on the cross, according to you. This man had no beginning and no end. Who is greater? Come on, this is your book, man. Your book says this man, no father, no mother, no beginning, no end. He's like God. Only Allah is like that. This man is like Allah. Why don't you worship him in your book? We haven't got him in the Quran. But you got him in your book. Worship him. Why not? No, you see, man, man, he believes what he wants to believe. You see, a sickness gets hold of anybody. Now mind what evidence is brought. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam performed miracles after miracles. Mojiza, the greatest miracle worker among the prophets was Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. He healed the lepers and the blind and the deaf and he gave life to the dead. 
by Allah's leave, bismillah. And yet nobody really believed him. You know that? Nobody. He goes and selects 12 people. His disciples, his hawariyun, his sahaba, his 12. And when he was in difficulties, 100% desertion, not one. One of them, Judas, sold him for 30 miser miserable pieces of silver. Sold his God for 30 pieces of silver. And the other guy, Peter, he cursed, abused and swore him. I don't even know the fellow. Who? His own God. He said, I don't even know him. And all the others left him in the lurch when he was most in need. Professor Mumeri, he says, his immediate disciples were always misunderstanding him and his works. Wanting him to show them the Father, to make God visible, to make God visible to the bodily eyes. Wanting him to call down fire from heaven. Wanting him to do and wanting to do themselves anything and everything that was incompatible with his great plan. This was how they treated him until the end. And when that came, they all forsook him and fled. Khalas. The most dastardly desertion that any community has ever had, any prophet has ever had, was Hazrat Isa Alayhi Salaam, his people. Hazrat Isa Alayhi Salaam. So, put it down. Hazrat Isa Alayhi Salaam. What makes him God? Ask the Christian. Look, the child was born in the stable. He grew up like any other human child. When he went to school with the other children, did they think they were schooling with a God? Did they? No, no, no. You know, it says at the trial, they said they beat him up. And one Roman soldier punched him in the stomach. Pete met Mukki Marka Kagai, prophesy who hit you. Kaho Mera Nam Kyahe. To Bohat Janta hai? Takaman, what's my name? Pete me Mukki Marka Kahak. Bolo, me kon hu. When he was on the cross, according to the Bible, they launched him on the side with a spear. I said, did the, the guy who punched him in the stomach, did he think he was punching his God? Oh, when he was born, on the eighth day he was circumcised, khatnaki, on the eighth day. So the barber, you know, in the east, our countries, I don't know now, but when I was young, it was the barber's prerogative. Hamare wahan, hajam aate the, bachchong ki khatna karte the. Today we go to the doctor, the surgeon, in, in South Africa, but in the old days it was the barber's privilege. So, some barber came to the stable, Caught little Jesus by his little penis, loosened the skin, put a bamboo splint, like in the good old days, and chopped up the skin. Who? His God. <laughs> no, no, did he think he was holding his God by his penis? Huh? What's that? What's, what has happened to you? No, no, this is the nature of man. Thomas Carlyle, in his lectures, 1840, Heroes and hero worship, in which he put our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his hero prophet. Hero prophet, he chose our Nabi, not Moses, not David, not Solomon, not Jesus, but Muhammad was his hero prophet, Thomas Kalai, in 1840. He begins his lecture by saying, in the history of the world, there will not again be any man ever so great whom his fellow men will take for a god. In the history of the world, there will not again be any man ever so great that his fellow men will take for a god. And he was considered to be one of the greatest thinkers of the past century, Thomas Kala. He says, no more. What he was trying to say is that we have reached that intellectual development, all of us, that we are not prepared to accept another human being as God anymore. Me, me, me. Look at me. If I can fly in the air like a bird going around the hall, and I come back here again. If I can tell you what's in your pocket, and how many notes you got? And what are the numbers of those notes? But I can show you in the palm of my hand what your wife is doing at home, what she's cooking. Look, look. I says, believe, I'm your God. I am your God. Mano. Bacho, manjao. He says, I Look, the man is, I think he's going off now. He's going off. You see? I said, look at me. The man who died. Let's come with me to the mortuary. And I can get the people out of the dead. Follow me. And they come out of the mortuary. They follow me. Dead people, certified dead, gone cold like rock. Will you accept me as your God? No. I said, Uncle, I don't know how you do it. Look, 
I take off my hat to you. I'm terrified of you. A man of your power. Shh, dangerous. If you wish, you know, you can, I can see, you can obliterate me. Finish me up. But you're not my God. And I'm looking at you. I can see, your mind tells you, this guy is about 70 years old. Before 70 years, he wasn't here. And he won't be here for another 70. You know, while you're looking, you can see all that. You know, I can, if not one, is the two of us. This is meant we can strangle him now. We can put a knife through him. You know, if he doesn't get enough water, he'll dehydrate. If he doesn't get air for two minutes, he'll die, suffocate. Oh, that is about what I'm doing. I'm flying like a bird. I walk on the water. I give life to the dead. I said, Uncle, look, I don't know how you do it. But you're not my God. In other words, intellectually, we are supposed to have reached that stage. That's what in 1840 this great thinker said. But is it so? No. There are millions today, over 1,200 million of the people who are considered to be the wisest of people on earth, the most civilized, the most cultured, the most advanced, they worship Jesus as God. Amazing. That is very God of very God. And in the teaching, they come along here to Pakistan, telling our people, our children. He says, God is a triune God. He's three in one. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. They continue. The Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But they are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. They continue. The Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. But they are not three persons, but one person. Well, how do you respond? You know, I was amazed. Thinking that this guy, he knows his language. Surely, it means what it says. No. I discover now, and I'm, I'm confronting the man now. As a young man, I passed standard six. That four years before metric, I think you call eight year. I left school, and now I know English. I can read newspapers. I can read books. Hmm? And now I'm coming across all this. Father is a person, son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person, but they're not three persons, but one person. See, maybe I don't understand the language. No, it's not the language. It's the most nonsensical statement. I'm, I'm telling these Americans, I was there in America, Jimmy Swaggart and his people. I said, is this English? I said, is this English? Sounds English. Person, 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 but not three person, but one person. It's not Urdu. Huh? You must be English. I say, this is not English. This is gibberish, rubbish, kachra. Most nonsensical thing you're talking. Person, person, person. But not three person, but one person. I said, what language is that? And I'm asking him, you can do the same. I was taking, telling our people in the UK. I said, all of you appear to be first generation Muslims. Just come from Bangladesh, India, or Pakistan. From your tongue they can make out. They know he's a new British. You know, coming from the subcontinent. They make out straight away. Even if you're clean shaven and you know you look like a Greek, they can know there's a Hindi here, Hindi. From your speech, most of us are still first generation. So I said, look, for you, you can hit him the hardest. You can hit him harder than me. Why? Because excuse me, sir. When you say person, 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 but not three person, but one person. Yeah? What, is, what is a person in your language? There are some jobs. What is a person? What makes you different from your brothers? If you are identical triplets, identical. You can't make out the difference. One of you commit murder. Can we hang the other? He says, no. I said, why not? You all look alike. He said, no, he's a different person. I said, what makes him different? His personality. That makes him different from the other. So you can't hang the other fellow, though he looks alike. So the father, he looks different. The son looks different. And the Holy Ghost looks different. They're not even like triplets. Because when you say in the name of the father, you have a certain mental picture. If your mind is whole, wholesome, is not twisted up inside when you say in the name of the Father, they are thinking of old Father Christmas, Santa Claus, millions and millions of times bigger than man, but somebody like a man sitting on some planet with his feet dangling onto the earth as his footstool, the heaven is his canopy, the loving Father in heaven. 
So you got a mental picture. Then you say, God the son? I said, what are you thinking of? A prize bull or a false waha? No. You think of a handsome young man? Like what we saw in the King of Kings? Or the day of triumph or Jesus of Nazareth? This films, films. Handsome young man with blonde hair, blue eyes, lovely beard. You have a mental picture. Not an African, not an Indian, not an Eskimo, white man, European, with a straight nose, not with a poly nose, like a Yahudi, you know, with a crooked nose, poly nose. No, 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 no. If they give him a straight nose, why you give him a straight nose? He was a Jew. See, if they give him a poly nose, everyone will say, Shylock, Shylock. Shakespeare made him famous. Shylock, Yahudi, Judah, Yahudi. You don't want your God to look like a Jew. So they give him a straight nose, like a German, like an Englishman, like a Norwegian. So, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, something that came like a dove when Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist, or something that came in flames of fire at Pentecost, is all in the scripture. The picture is not very vivid, but the picture is there. I said, you've got three mental pictures. Father looks different, Son looks different, Holy Ghost looks different. And yet you say one. I'm asking, how many have you got in your head? He says one. I said, why are you lying to me? He's lying to you. When you say, unless your mind is diseased, when you say Father, you're not thinking of the Son. When you say the Son, you're not thinking of the Holy Ghost. There are three distinct mental pictures. So when you're worshipping a triune God, you're worshipping three, not one. You see, we have to reason with them. Allah tells us, tell them, Wala takulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. In tahu khairul lakum. This is stop it. It will be better for you. Inna Allah ilahum wahid. For you, Allah is one Allah. He is not three in one. He is not one in three. Tell him. Speak to him. Reason with him. Talk to him. We are in tops. Allah has put us on tops. Wallah. You don't have to apologize for anything. He's got to apologize for everything. He says, Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. This is what he's proud of to say. He is the only begotten son. Eki Janahua beta. Begotten, not made. Janahua. Peda nahi kiya gaya. Not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Every dog, pig, and donkey was made by God. Jesus is not like that. He was begotten, not made. I'm asking my British, our British Muslims. I said, ask this English people, excuse me, sir. When you say begotten, not made, what are you trying to emphasize? Tum kya kehne chahte ho? Please explain. Wallah, you can't hit him harder than that. And you seem so innocent. Bhole bhalo. When you say begotten, not made, what are you trying to tell me? Please explain. And no Englishman dare open his mouth. Therefore, when I'm talking, I said, look, I want to talk to your godfathers. If you want to debate with me, I want to talk to your godfathers. The people who are responsible for you, I want to talk to them. Because you don't understand English. They don't. When I'm speaking this, the guy is, you know, like a stubborn mule. You know, he wants to bang his head. He wants to if nothing is happening. Say, so bring guys who understand the language. Like Swagat, man knows his language. See, Professor Clark, the man knows his language. So I can talk to him, I can reason with him. This guy... He says, like he's not listening. From Mumbukman Umyan found Dairion. Deaf, dumb, and blind. They will not return to the path. What makes Jesus God? His miracles. What miracles? He says, He gave life to the dead. He said, Isnillah. He says, No. This is the privilege of God. Only God can give life back to the dead. But look, he doesn't say that. Nowhere does he say he gave life to the dead. No way, he's attributing to Allah. Again and again he says, I can of my own self do nothing. Of my own self, I can do nothing. Hazrat Isa says that in the book of authority. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. The word ye hear are not mine, he says. The word ye hear are not mine, but the Father that sent me, he had given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Even as the Father has said unto me, so I speak. Of that day, Yom al Yom al no, but no man, no, not the angels, nor the Son, but the Father in heaven. Only Allah knows when Qiyamah is going to be established. I don't know. Amazing. He's supposed to be God. 
He said, I by the finger of God cast out devils. I by the spirit of God do this thing. Jo kuch karte hai, main Allah ke madad se main karta hu. That's in his book. He said, my father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. Where does he say he gave life to the dead? Where does he say he is equal to the father? I said, there is not a single verse in the whole encyclopedia of the Bible where Jesus says, I am God or where he says, worship me. There isn't. And in meetings, mixed meetings where the Christians are there, learned of men of Christianity are there, I am offering to them, I said, you show me in your book any version of the Bible where Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ says, I am God, I said, I am prepared to accept him as God. If you show me in your book, he says, worship me, I am prepared to worship him. I said, I don't speak for these people, my brother. They make up their own minds. I am prepared to put my neck on the guillotine, chop it off as you like. Show me in your book. And I know it's not there. Allah is telling you in the Quran, it's not there. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, that on the day of judgment, Allah says, I will ask, Oh Jesus, did you tell your people to worship you and your mother besides Allah? Did you? He says, Ya Bari Tala, I never did any such thing. If I had done it, you would have known it. And as long as I was with them, I was a witness over them to see that they didn't do it. But after you took me up, you know what they did. Into azibhum fainnuhum ibaduka. So if you punish them, they are your servants. Teri milkat hai, tu chahta hai, tu saja kar. Wa in taqfir lahum fainna ka antal azizul hakiya. But if you forgive them, you are exalted in might. You are powerful. You are wise. Al-Hakim. You know what is good for them. You have the right. In other words, he never claimed divinity. That he is God. So I believe that. You never. Any Bible, I say, it is not there. I say, show me, show me you Christians, 1,000 million of you, the learned men of Christianity, in your Bible that you have. Any Bible. Where Jesus says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. Show me. Now, you see, people who don't understand English, and people who do understand English, but you know, the senses get numb. Or they get Knocked out. Allah farmata hai, bal nakzifu bil haqq ya lal baatil. When truth is hurled against falsehood, such ko leka jhoot ko maarte hai, it knocks out its brains, uska bhecha phor deta hai. So when this is truth, when you're pushing truth before the man, he goes beserk, a gun pounds jhodata hai usko. He wants to fight, he says, you are taking my religion. I said, look, I'm asking you nicely, show me where does he say I'm God, where does he say worship? There isn't. So he comes and he says, he said, I and my father are one. I said, look man, don't you understand English? I said, where he says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. Or he said, he that has seen me has seen the father. I says, please man, this English, do you understand my language? This English I'm talking simple. Where he says, I, tell me it is not there, but what about this? I will deal with it. But I am asking you, where does he say, kaha usne kaha ke me khuda hu? To batao mujhe ke yaan is jaga kaha ke me khuda hu. That's all. That's all. He said, he said, I am my father one. He that is seen, he has seen the father. No man come to the father but by me. He says, before Abraham was, I am. I said, look, we deal with all that. But please, be honest enough to tell me that there is no such thing what I am asking. Then we will ask. And can you imagine that a thousand million Muslims today, at least, we are a thousand million. We are all denying the divinity of Christ. We all deny that he is God. Because Allah says, لَكَتْ كَفَرَ اللَّذِنَا قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ جو کوئی مسیح مریم کے بیٹے کو خدا کہے گا وہ کفر کرتا ہے. He's blaspheming. It's an act of treason against Allah. So, وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ الْمَسِيحُ نَا كَحَا يَا بَنِ إِسْرَعِيلُ اُجْرُونَ فِي إِسْرَعِيلُ لَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ جو کوئی اللہ کے ساتھ کسی کو شریک کرے گا فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ لِيَا الْجَنَّةِ اللہ will make جنت حرام for them وَمَا وَهُ نَارِ and the fire of hell will be the dwelling place وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ and for the wrong those there will be no one to help we say Isa is not Khuda he is not God he is a mighty messenger of God one of the greatest messengers he is the Masih, the Messiah he is Masihullah, he is Rasulullah, he is Kalamullah he gave life to the dead by God's permission, he healed those born blind and the lepers. By God's permission, he said, we are going together. But he is not God. And he is not the begotten son of God. 
come and show us what makes him God. The man never claimed it. Whatever he did, others did greater miracles than Jesus. The greatest miracle he did was, though it's a long story there, he gave life to Lazarus, his disciple. He was dead for three days, brought him back to life. Alhamdulillah. I said, look, it's a miracle. It's a great miracle. Mojiza. But you know, Moses in the Bible, in the Quran also, we read that he had a rod, Asa. When he went before Pharaoh, the Egyptian magicians, they threw the little magic sticks, wands. And they became like little serpents. This was magic. Allah had shown him the power that he could do with a rod. So he threw the rod, Asa. And Asa became a Asdaha. And he swallowed up all these little snakes of the Egyptians. So the magicians realized that this is not magic. This is not mesmerism. This is not hypnotism. Because the sticks vanished for good and the rod was not thickened. You see, if you hypnotize a man, the other man greater than you can dehypnotize. I am trying to bluff you with a piece of string. They go, saap hai, saap, saap mere haat mein. And maybe I have this magic powers, you know, making you to believe, they go, they go, the saap hai, saap, that piece of string, saap. But another man comes along who is more convincing than me. He says, it's by rassi hai, rassi dekha, tum beva ko mat bano, to rassi hai. And you see, really, it's rassi hai. That is mesmerism, hypnotism. But this is no magic. This is no hypnotism. The things vanished. So they accepted the, the God of Musa alayhi salam, the Egyptian magicians. But the rod, the rod was a dead stick, inanimate object, died years ago, a tree. It was a vegetation, vegetable. That tree had died or cut, and then it was dried, and they made a rod out of that, putting life into that, and not only vegetable life, but animal life. Not making the way I could find, could nickel ne laga, could patti patti. No, he changed that into a living thing and a higher life. Not a plant life, animal life. So who is greater? Moses or Jesus? Moses. But he said, no, no. I said, this was, please, man, be reasonable. Be reasonable. You see, our problem is that we have not been giving battle to these things. We were destined. Allah is telling us that he has given us this deen, deen of Islam. Inna deena in Allah islam So most certainly the religion, deen, acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ And if you want a religion other than Islam, you say it will not be accepted for you. وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And in the hereafter, you will be of the losers. But what do we do with this deen? We are sitting on it like a cobra on a pile of wealth. We won't use it and we won't allow people to come near it. The destiny Allah has in store for us. This deen. He says, Aisa deen to me diya hai is to master, overcome and supersede them all. Kulli. Wallahu karihal kafirun. Say, no mind, how much the unbeliever might not like it. This is the destiny of his deen. He repeats the same formula again. Another place in the Quran. Same ayah. Another place. And he ends by saying, Wallahu kariyal mushrikun. No mind, how much the mushriks might not like it. This is the destiny of his deen. To master all deens, every religion. And he repeats the same formula again in the Quran three times. He says, Huwa allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda. He it is who has sent his messenger with guidance. Wa deen al haq. And with the religion of truth. Li yuzi hira huwa lad deen kulli. That it may prevail, overcome and supersede every other deen. Master them all. Bulldoze them all. Wakafa billahi shahida. And enough is Allah as a witness to this fact that is going to make his deen to prevail. With you or without you. He can do it. By his will. He can do it. Just like that. But he wants to give in you and me that privilege, that honor. He wants to give rotters like you and me that privilege, that honor of doing the works of the prophets of God and earning a prophet's reward. This is a privilege he's giving us. That this knowledge is given you. Go to it. Go to it and talk to people. Share the deen with them. Conquer the world. The world is for us. Allah says so. Whether it be Judaism, communism, Christianism, Buddhism, Hinduism, every ism, 
Islam is destined to master them all. And Allah is a witness to this fact that he's going to do it. Will you take it? You believe in it? You Muslims of Karachi, do you believe in it? This ayah I read to you just now. Samaj me ayah. Kya? Allah farmata hai ke liju zehirahu ala dine kulli. Sare dino, all deens, he's there to master them all. Kulli. Sab ke upar. Fauqiyat paiga. Deen al-Islam. Me pushta hun tum mante ho. Yes. Yes. You believe in it? Of course, yes. You are not a Muslim if you don't. You are not a Muslim. Allah farmata hai ke this is what I'm going to do and wa'ad Allah haq. Allah ka wa'ad asacha. He's going to make it happen. With you or without you. And you believe in it. I say, is that why you're sitting on your backside doing nothing? You believe in it? If you had the laser gun, hmm, you can wipe out the Russians. His tanks, his, his helicopters and all, just like that. You'll be sitting here. Won't you be itching to get to the border? Huh? If you had it? Yes. Each and everyone will be running with that gun, that laser gun. Come on, man. Come on, Kafir, Rus. Who is harassing my people? Who is killing another Muslim brothers? I'll go and wipe them out. If you had it. If you had it and you can see the power of the laser gun, how it blots out rocks. Anything, anything that you can see, you show and you pull the trigger and it blots it out. Man, you've got such a gun. You sit on your backside and getting a hiding. People come along and making a punching bag out of you. Using you as a doormat. Making mess in your head. Stealing your children. You sit like that. With open mouth. And you say, you believe? No, you do not. We do not really believe. Allah, we don't. It's a Musab, Musab, two Quran. Bad karne ke baat hai. We believe. When you believe, you go for it. This is the proof. Proof of our faith is what you believe, you do. Musab kete hum, I believe. What do you believe? You see, there is a very earthly example I give you. Very common example. In my country, we have different provinces. And the provinces have their own laws. Rules of the road. There is a place called Charlestown on the border of Natal, where I come from, my province. And on the other side of the border is a town called Volkrust. Now, before you can cross the border from Charlestown into Transvaal, from Natal into Transvaal, from Natal into Transvaal, you see a signboard. There is a signboard, road sign. It says, Speed traps ahead. The road sign. I don't know whether you have like that in Pakistan. Speed traps ahead. Speed traps ahead. You go another 200 meters, there is another sign. This is unique. I haven't seen it anywhere else. It says, you have been warned. You warning warning. You have been warned. What do you do? You carry on. It's a bad thing, you know. Speed traps. How many times, you know, we are when there was no speed traps? So you carry on, 100 kilometers an hour. You're supposed to be 60. So you just cross the border, and the guy comes out of the bushes, a policeman, signals to you, stop. You know that? 200 rand, that's 2,000 rupees. Fine. 2,000 rupees is going to sting you now. How do you feel? Hmm? <laughs> you know, your tongue starts getting stuck on the top of your roof of the mouth. Come, finish. So the guy comes smiling at you, the policeman. He said, didn't you see the sign? He said, yes. Didn't you believe? He said, yes. Did you believe? Huh? If you believed, you wouldn't have slowed down. Wouldn't you have slowed down? You didn't believe. Who are you bluffing? 200 rand. 2,000 rupees. Fine. So Allah Baritala is telling us. We say, we believe. What believe? Wallah, it is our destiny. And it's so easy. If you just equip yourself with the right weapons. And the right weapons, so look, I have given you one tonight. The Aisha Bawani Trust, they have published this in, here in Karachi. To give each and every one of you. If you haven't got it, get it. Tomorrow, day after tomorrow, get it from their offices. Aisha Bawani Wakaf. Is the Bible God's word? Is the Bible God's word? This book. If you haven't got it, you must go and get it. It's free. You owe it to yourself. You master this book. There isn't a Christian born who can stand before you. Wallah. There isn't a Christian born where there is a bishop or bishop's father. 
there isn't a Christian who can stand before you. You got to know the weapons of your enemy, what he's using, what he's using to catch fish. Once you know, the whole thing is plain sailing, rather plain sailing. And with one, you master one, you use that, and you see how your knowledge grows. Your knowledge grows. I started it, I didn't have all this. This is ready made. This is ready made. This is pre digested. Tayyar. In the age of the instant tea and the instant coffee and the instant pudding, this is instant knowledge. Easy. <laughs> I will end, it, end with this. This is like that pebble, that little stone that Hazrat Dawud picked up when he give, went to give back to Jalut. Allah tells us in the Quran, beautiful story, that the Bani Israel and the Palestinians were at war and it, the war was going on for decades. In the Bible we read, and the Jews, they destroyed the Palestinians utterly. Halas, khadam kar diya, satya nas kar diya. And they see they come again and there's another fight. And they destroyed the Palestinians utterly. And they come again somewhere else and they fight. And it is carried on for decades, decades. Utterly, utterly. Now comes the time when the Palestinians, they have a mighty giant in their midst. An eight foot giant. I'm almost six feet. Another two feet higher than me. Big child, maybe 400 pounder. And the Bani Israel are there. And he's shouting from the other hill. Ke koi hai? Ma ka beta koi hai? Is there anybody there? Who can come and give battle to me? And the Jews were shivering in their pants. The Jews. I said, I don't know whether they used to wear pants those days. Figuratively. They were shivering in their pants. So, Dawud a.s. He was no prophet then. He was a shepherd boy. He must have been grazing his sheep somewhere around there. And he sees what's going on. So, he comes up to the group, to Talud, the commander, Saul. And he says, look, I will give battle to the giant. Big joke. But he has to give out. He says, you go and look after your father's sheep, man. He says, no, no, no. I'm in business. I'm serious. He said, all right. In that case, if you want to commit suicide, you have to do the job. Karo. So, Talut offers his sword and his shield. Hello, our talwar and our shield. So, Dawud al Islam says, look, I don't understand the sword and the shield. I haven't used them in my life. I don't know how to carry them, how to use them. But I know my sling. You know, the old-fashioned sling with a pouch with two strings. He's used to that. There was no rubber strings those days. You know, you pakar ka martein, gopan kya kya tehya. Golel ha. Not that one. He used the other one with a pouch. I used it when I was a little boy in India. Yes. So, another big joke. It's a bigger joke. You little fellow, tiny, you know, little pygmy. You want to go and give battle to the giant and now you want to give it this little thing. Bacho ka khilona. He said, no, I understand this. I know with this I kill birds. With this I have been killing rabbits. I know how to use it. Your sword and shield I don't know. So he walks down the hill. At the stream, he picks up a few pebbles. Chote, chote, patri. And he puts one in the pouch. And he swings. Vuing, 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 vuing. And he lets go. One side of the string. And he knows when to. And this thing goes and hits Jalut in the forehead. Cracks his skull. The guy falls. So Dawud alayhi salam, little Dawud, he re- re- rushes up to him, takes his own sword and chops off his head. So Allah describes it. وَقَتَلَ دَعُودُ جَالُوتَ and Dawud killed Jalut, Watahu Lahul Mulka, and Allah gave him dominion, power, well, hikmat and wisdom, wa'allamuhum in Mayasha, and whatever else he will, with that little piece. I said, This is that little stone. And this is your privilege. It's a privilege in each and every Muslim. Just master this little book, it's given free to you. And ask him things that are written here so clearly, easily, pre digested. You just master this and you talk. Master this and you talk to him. And the more you talk, the more you will get. Our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave the secret of learning, knowledge. He said, anni aya. Deliver the message regarding me, even if it is one verse. That's a secret of knowledge. You know one verse? <laughs> There's more than one here. You know one verse, you use it, Allah gives you more. And he, the more you use, the more you get. This is the secret of knowledge. The more you give, the more you get. And you will also, in your own situation, you'll be the master of the situation. This is what you owe to yourself and to the ummah. 
with these words, I urge upon you, my brethren, to take up the challenge. Don't sit and wait for other people to come and make nets, nets in your head as they have been doing to us e even in our own meetings. At question time, if there's an opportunity, I will explain what has been going on from my last visit to now. With these words, I'm very grateful to the Faran Club for giving me this opportunity and bringing all you to you. <laughs> What is your future program? Uh, have you prepared your disciplines to learn so that they can propagate after your death or after you? What is your program? Have you prepared training for people? Have you trained your disciplines? If you want, I will also offer our service. Yes, thank you very much. You see, this is this is the training. This is the training. You have to do homework. <laughs> Just telling you theoretically, like this and like that, it's very difficult for the human mind to retain what I've said. Therefore, I have given it to you in writing. You go home, you read it, and this book here, if you have a Christian friend, ask him for a Bible. Get his own Bible. But I'm telling you in this book here what to do with the Bible. If you don't do that, that book is a danger in your house. But if you follow instructions, it will become a weapon of attack and of defense. In this book, I will tell you that look, these verses, mark them in red. So, in the Bible that you get, mark them in red. Red crayon of your children, the one they use at school. Mark it in red. Then I said, these verses, mark it in yellow. So you mark it in yellow. I said, these verses, you mark it in green. So you mark it in green. So the Bible becomes a coded instruction book for you. When you open red, you know what it means. When you, you open yellow, you know what it means. When you open green, you know what it means. This little book is a start. Then you have these videotapes available. You know, you have these that in the house. You can put them on and put them off as you like. And there's one thing that people are telling me, of course, it makes me very happy, that the children, they enjoy it. The children. Now, if the children enjoy it, then I tell you, it's also good entertainment. So get it. Uh, I'd like to make a question, please. Please, go ahead. Uh, you said in your lecture, not your exact words, but you said that uh, Jews and um, Christians but I don't think God being all merciful would call it haram whether they believe in the oneness of God entirely or not I mean what is your answer to that point well the answer is is not what I want to do or how I feel Allah says he says that shirk he will not forgive anything else that is his business but says, shirk, I will not forgive. And anyone who says, Allah says, as I quoted during the talk, I said, Lakat kafar al lazina qalu inna allaha huwal masih ibn Maryam. This is how the Quran reads. And behold, that, you know, uh, why is qal, uh, uh, what was that, Abdullah? Lakat kafar al lazina qalu inna allaha huwal masih ibn Maryam. Whosoever says that Jesus Christ the son of Mary is God, they are making kufar. It's an act of blasphemy, treason against Allah. Like in every country of the world, you see, you break rules of the road. You do so many other little petty crimes. Either the judge forgives you or he gives you a slight punishment. But in one act of treason against the state, what happens to you? You have been a great philanthropist. You know, you build hospitals, you know, you build orphanages, you build schools for the people. But one act of treason against your country, what do, will they do to you if they don't hang you or shoot you? What else? Right, but God is supposed to be greater than all of us. Yes, but and he has his rules, so you right. don't take advantage. I, I just but I you have to do that. But you have to do that. Okay, can I just clear the point? Ke, um, Suppose people are very good people, like take Mother Teresa for example. She's done so much, how can you say that uh, heaven would be denied to her? That's, I answered you just now. 
I answered you, my sister, just now. Mother Teresa, beautiful work. She's done. So some philanthropist here in Karachi, let's say they have done something similar or greater than Mother Teresa. You see, Mother Teresa uses other people's funds. Other, please, other people's funds. People are supporting her. But you, out of your sweated labor, if you build up a school, if you build up an orphanage, is far greater than Mother Teresa. Now, that person in Pakistan, you know, he does one act of treason against the state. And if you are the judge, I want to know what judgment you will pass. Let the man off or have him hanged or shot. Now, this covers all the books, all the religions and all the rasuls. Now, how do we say that by saying that in the face of Islam, the other religions are bulldozed. Are we conforming to this Kalmai uh, Iman or we are deviating a little in our thinking? When Allah says, You understand Arabic? No, not much. But now that I'm giving you the meaning, yes. you don't think I'm pulling a fast one on you? No, no, you're most no. welcome. So Allah says, لِيُزِهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ Deen, you understand what Deen is? Means a way of life. Religion. Christianity is a Deen. Judaism is a Deen. Hinduism is a Deen. Communism is a Deen. It's a materialistic Deen. So all these Deens, whatever, whether I have named or I haven't named, Allah says, كُلِّ If you are a Muslim, then you believe in it. The others, they have their position. But they are to be, this Islam has claimed to supersede them all. Because in the teachings of the previous religions, you haven't got the whole truth. You see, if you read the Christian Bible, if you know anything about it, yes, okay. Jesus Christ, he is telling you, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 7, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. And the verses preceding this, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. Tum sahan nahi kar sakoge. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear? That shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Right. So he's promising you somebody. Somebody who's going to come will guide mankind into all truth. And we say, Muhammad guided mankind into all truth. All your problem. He's giving you the answers to them. It might not go down well. You know, you used to a certain way of life. We grooved in into a certain type of behavior. Like the Americans. Jimmy Swaggart. You know, in his book on alcohol, he says there are 11 million drunkards in America and 44 million heavy drinkers. Drunkards and heavy drinkers. And he says, I make no distinction between the two. Meaning, in his sight, this mighty evangelist, he said 55 million drunkards in America. And Christianity has given no solution. The problem of surplus women. There are 8 million, actually 7.8 million more women than men in the United States alone. If every man in the United States gets married, there will be still 8 million women who can't get husbands. Actually, there are 20 million surplus women for which Christianity has offered no answer. 2,000 years have gone now. He's still waiting for the Holy Ghost to come along and tell you what to do. He hasn't come yet. The problem of race, the problem of surplus women, the problem of gambling. You haven't got a thing as a Christian. So in other words, as a Jew, you haven't got answers to the problems of mankind, nor as a Christian. So Islam is destined to master them all, supersede them all, correct them all. There is a woman, Maryam Jamila, and she has devoted her life on the same thing that you are doing on comparative studies between Islam and Christianity, Islam and Judaism, and Islam and Westernization, like things like that. And we have gone through many of her literatures, many of her written work. But we haven't seen anything from your side. This is the first book that I am seeing from your side in my life at least. So aren't you thinking to do something like that? 
in the well, field of literature because that will live forever. You see, there's a list if you've got the book, there's a list of other books behind it. Yes. And this work is going on for decades. Pakistanis are Pakistanis, so you are so far away from me. To get a book to you, I have to send this by A, absolutely free of charge. We are printing them 100,000 at a time. At least you can give any publisher the right of publishing your books. At least if, you can know If this. you open the book, on the cover it says, an open order. We give you a license to reproduce this book for sale or for free distribution. And we say, Wallah, if we had the means, we would have flooded the world with a free literature. So the offer is for you. You go and reproduce this book and you give out or you can sell. But there is a question here, seems to be a very important question because it's coming from some very important people. Uh, on this paper that is used, it says, Christ the King Seminary, National Catholic Theological Institute, near Hassan Square, University Road, Karachi, 47, Pakistan. Uh, coming from the Christ the King Seminary, it says, Do you lecture that you have been speaking of Christians from the past hour and not on Islam. If Islam is a religion of peace, preach peace. Uh -huh. Do you realize how many verses of the Quran speak of Hazrat Isa? There is a whole surah dedicated to Hazrat Maryam. All this is very true, very true, very true. You are talking about Islam. Everything that I was speaking was about Islam. See, when I said there is no original sin, that was Islam. When I said Jesus is not God, that is Islam. When I said Jesus was not killed or crucified, that is Islam. So although I was... <laughs> I'm not pulling this out of my head, of, out of thin air. Everything that I was using, I was using the Bible, but proving my Islamic case. With regards to all these other suggestions that have been made, beautiful. Look, this is what the Christian ought to be doing. This church people seems to know that there is a chapter in the, call, in the Quran called Surah Maryam. The bulk of Christians don't know. There is no such chapter in the Bible in honor of the name of the mother of Jesus. There isn't. <laughs> 66 books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Ezekiel, Elisha, Elijah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, no Mary, no Maryam. Then he says, you know how many times Jesus is mentioned in the Quran? Yes, he is mentioned 25 times. And I must also tell you at the same time that the name Muhammad only five times. Amazing, amazing situation. See, Muhammad وسلم, is mentioned in the Quran only five times. Four times as Muhammad and one time as Ahmad. Altogether five. Jesus, 25 times. Subhanallah. Why so? There is a chapter about Surah Maryam, about the birth of Jesus. Surah Ali Imran, about the birth of Jesus. Why? Why does it? And the name of the uh, Prophet's birth is not mentioned. Muhammad's birth is not mentioned, his mother's name is not mentioned, his daughter's name is not mentioned, his wife's name is not mentioned. Amazing! But mother of Jesus is mentioned, and the birth of Jesus is mentioned. Why? Why? Because he's greater? Why? You see, there was a problem. When our Nabi Karim وسلم, was made to declare his mission, when he reached Medina, he found that the Jews and the Christians were each other's Next, throats. The Jews and the Christians were at war about the personality of Jesus. The Jews said, the Jews said that because Jesus has got no father, he is the illegitimate child of Mary. Sunte hai bhaiya? He is the illegitimate child of Mary. A Roman soldier, they give a name, they give a name about to the soldier. He raped Mary. And he produced this illegitimate child. Astaghfirullah. They say he is the bastard child of Mary. Mazallah. Allah may maaf kare. But this is what the Jews said. Ke haram zada bacha hai. The Christians say because he's got no father, his father is God. One goes to one extreme, the other goes to other extreme. 
So Allah tells us what, what position must we take, we Muslims. So he's telling us what to do. He says, tell them, pull, tell them. Ya halal kitab, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, la taghlu fi dinikum. He said, do not go to extremes in your religion. Wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al-haq. And don't say anything about Allah except the truth. Innam al-Masih, most certainly the Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, Rasulullah, is a messenger of Allah, wa kalimatuhu, and a word proceeding from him. Al-Qaha ila Maryam wa ruhum minhum, which he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. Fa'aminu billahi wa rusulihi, so believe in Allah and his messenger, Jesus. This is actually what Jesus says. In the Gospel of St. John, he says, and this is life eternal. For salvation, Rahinaja, this is life eternal. That they should know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I'm asking the Muslim, do you believe that? Of course we do. There is only one Allah and Isa is Rasul. There is only one Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. There is only one Allah and Musa is Salam is Kalimullah. There is only one Allah and Ibrahim is Khalilullah. There is only one Allah and Jesus is his messenger. Now, all this trouble we have to take. Allah has given us to rectify the people. So look, this is the reason why the birth of Jesus is mentioned, that he was born miraculously, that he was not the illegitimate child of Mary. We are not saying that. An amazing thing, I'm speaking so clearly, that this is what the Jews say, this is what the Christian says. And Major Nasir in Sialkot is head of another theological institute in Gujranwala. He comes 38 miles to challenge. He said, look, I said that Jesus is illegitimate. I'm asking the people, did I say he was illegitimate? The, everybody says, no. Now this man, you see, I don't know what type of English that they learn. Major Nasir of the Pakistan army, retired now. Major, I don't know how he became a major. No? A man, he doesn't, that I'm saying this is what the Jews say, and they say, I said. This is what keeps on happening. I don't know. Therefore, I said, please bring your godfathers to talk to me. But our friends, I mentioned the name at the beginning. You remember? Joseph Hira Singh and Emmanuel Sharif. Look, bring those people and these two can become their advisors. Because they don't have, don't have any confidence in the godfathers. So right, you teach them, you train them, come together, arrange the meetings, and you'll see that I will come over. Right? We don't want to deprive you of the pleasure of being also a participant. But bring these white guys from Britain, your bishops, or from America, your evangelists. Sir, the Holy Quran has named the followers of Hazrat Isa as Nasara. And uh, the, uh, they have Latinized it, the Christians have Latinized it as Nazarite. And uh, the dictionary says that uh, the Nazarites were the earliest Jewish Christian sect. Uh, so is it right to translate Nasara as uh, Christians, or it will be that uh, Jewish Christian sect which has now uh, perished off? Look, for 1,400 years, I don't know whether you are a Muslim. Yeah, I'm you are a Muslim. Yeah. For 1,400 years, when the Quran is talking about the Yahudi and the Nasara, they say that Ibrahim, the Jews say that he was a Yahudi, and the Christians say that he was a Nasara. So Allah says he was neither a Jew nor a Nasara because he was born long before who? Long before Moses and long before Jesus. Right, yes, he sir, was a Muslim. Uh, what I wanted to ask that uh, I think that the modern Christianity is the renewal of the pagan Roman religion because most of the concepts are the Trinity, whatever. And incarnation. So look, whatever. What the modern Christianity is saying is all covered in the Quran. He's talking about the Trinity this way, that way, that way. Salah Sabala Takulu Salasa. Don't say Trinity. This is stop, it will be better for you. So, what is this modern Christianity has got? which is not covered. Don't play with words now. You see, the whole Muslim world knows who is Yahudi and who is Nasara. Yeah. Whether the Nasara is a Roman Catholic, is an Anglican, is a Seventh-day Adventist, is a Jehovah's Witness, this thousand different sects and denominations, they say they are Nasara, Christian, they are all Nasara. Right, next one, Thanks. please. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to ask you a question about the, what the sects we have, decided, uh, sects we have divided. We Muslims, and uh, we are called, for example, Al-Hadis, or Shia and Sunni. What would you advise a new Muslim to join? I mean, what I believe, what I'm told every day life. The you beliefs see? of Shia and Sunnis and Al Hadith and other people who are supposed to be Muslims are a bit different. 
So what would you suggest a new Muslim to go into? Right, I will tell you. You see, if you are a Shia, my sister, you convert the person to Shiaism. If you are a Sunni, you convert him to Sunnism. You see, I happen to be a Sunni Bora. You see, the Bori community, the Smiley Khojas, they are Shia. I come from the same part of the country with similar names, same language, and I'm a Sunni. Now, I do not take credit for being a Sunni, and I do not disparage the other guy because he's a Shia. Simply because the people who reach my people were Sunnis, whatever they thought that we accepted it. Their forefathers, they were approached by people who had some Shia ideas, they made them into Shias. So now, we are not going to fight. See, the Christians are not fighting. There are a thousand different sects and denominations, but when they come to steal your children, they're not talking about it. They say, look, now I'm making you a Christian, but you mustn't become a Jehovah's Witness. I'm making you a Christian, but you mustn't be a Roman Catholic. He talks nothing of the kind. Whatever church he belongs to, he just only teaches you that. So you follow his example, the Christian's example, you won't go wrong. Tamam, Hazrat se guzarish hai. Right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Say, wait a minute. It says here, there's some written questions as well. Is Christianity a real threat to people of Pakistan? Have you come across Christians preaching the religion in Pakistan? I was going to tell you that. You remember on my way to America, I was thinking of the date and I think the MC mentioned 17th of October. I was here in this hall, 1986. And I was giving you all a preview of what was going to happen in America. Actually, I was practicing. You know, you were doing me a favor, giving me the opportunity of rehearsing what I was going to do. And at question time, if you remember, there was one Muslim, tall gentleman, and he introduced himself as Pakka Musalman. That Pakka Musalman, he said, look, Mr. D, that you are not a god, you are not a prophet. You are going to America, you know, to go and give battle to this mighty giant. You know, he appears on 700 TV stations in, in America alone, actually in 2000 throughout the world, 2000 TV stations of the world he appears. He says, 700 stations, this guy swagat, he's going to chew you and spit you out. Like you do to Pan. Pan kha kha ka chawa chawa ka thuk de ka esa esa that's what he's going to do to you. And this was a pakka Muslim talking. I hope if that Muslim is around somewhere, give him, lend him that tape, you know, about the debate and the question and answers with swagat. Right. Then, at the end of the lecture, as it always happens... See, we were sitting here, we were the first ones. Please. As it always happens, you all want to shake hands. I love it. There's a limit to what I can take, but I love it. So, you all gather around me and pumping my hand, pumping my hand. While you are doing that... While I was doing that, a young boy, I didn't know whether he was a Muslim or a Christian, now I know he was a Christian. That young boy comes to me. With these beautiful Torahs. Beautiful, beautiful, wallah, beautiful Torahs. He gives them to me like this, in my direction. So I read there, Allah Muhammad. I read there, kya likha hai? Allah Muhammad. So I wanted to kiss them. I wanted to kiss this. Because I'm old fashioned. You know, I was in respect, I was going to kiss it. But the, you people were not giving me a chance, so I put it in my pocket. In my hotel, I didn't have a chance to take it out. When I go to Dubai next day, I take out everything from my pocket, cleaning my pocket, I go through this, Allah Muhammad. Something in Arabic calligraphy of the Quran, Quranic calligraphy. See this beautiful calligraphy? So I say, looks like Abana. I say, maybe it's Rabbana Atina fit dunya. You know, something gives you a cue. Rabbana Atina fit dunya, Hasanatum wa filakhirat, Hasanatum wa kin azab And something else, another beautiful Tughra, and another beautiful Tughra. And I turn the back. See at the back there, going through one, two. It says here the Lord's Prayer. I said, the Lord's Prayer? I said, the Pakistanis, they talk like that? Because I said, these Pakistanis have done better than me. You know, I have done some books. I'll show you the books. I'll show you the books that we have printed. Beautiful. Everyone, each and everyone a masterpiece of production. 
So I said, then the Pakistanis beat me. Look at this. The Pakistanis beat me. But now the Pakistanis say the Lord's Prayer. I didn't know that. So I turned the other way around. I see again. Abana, Abana. This is, this is not Rabbana, Abana. And I'm trying to read. And I can't read. Because this is not the Quran. You see, if it is a Quran, if I get a start of a phrase or a sentence, I can... But I just couldn't do it. Then I look again. Allah Muhammad. This is not Allah Muhammad. It's Allah Muhabba. Look at this. Everybody is getting caught out. Fellow like me gets caught out. An Arab gentleman in Jeddah, uh, Sheikh Ahmad Ali Rida, elderly man like me, I show him this. He says, Ya Sheikh, look at this. I got this in Pakistan. It's Allah Muhammad. I said, no, Ya Sheikh, have another good look. He said, Allah Muhammad. I said, no, Ya Sheikh, have a good look. He said, Allah Muhabba. I said, ah, you got it right now. Can you see what they're doing to you? Catching fish. Machli apakarja. Look, give it to me here, 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 in the hall here. This is what I got here. In other words, if they can catch me, what about the poor ignorant people? You know, in the villages, all over the whole country. Printed in Germany, all this produced in Germany. This collusion between the Germans and these born again Christians here, going door to door. This is what they're trying to do, pervert the people, but this unfair means. Look at this. Here. Now they do this in Pushtu. All this is done in Pushtu. From radio, Islamabad. Islamabad radio. I got the evidence here. They're broadcasting some messages. In that they give you a PO box number. So the poor man wrote for some free literature. And what he got? He got the New Testament in Arabic, and he's got all the books in Pushto, 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 Christianity. From where? Islamabad Radio. You see, there's something going on somewhere, as the MC was referring, that something has gone wrong somewhere. Somebody is in control. Like Shaitan is really ruling, look at this, the lights go off. Not only here, Sialkot, the lights went off. You know, where, where I go, where, where the lights go off. Uh, in, in, in. Huh? Look at this. Al Kitab. Look at this. Beautiful book. Al Kitab. Muslim or Christian? What does it look like? Muslim. Look at this. Al Kitab. Look at this. You think Zalik al Kitab ularay bafi hudalil muttaqin? No, 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 no. I'm trying to read. Zalik al Kitab ularay bafi. And I can't find it. I can't see it. I can't get going. You know why? Because this is the Gospel of St. Matthew. Matthew. This is Matthew. Catching fish. You see, Dale Carnegie has written books. Positive thinking. How to win friends and influence people. In that he says, he said, I like strawberry and cream. You know the American. They like strawberry and cream. It, sound, it tastes insipid to me. But the American loves it. The Westerner loves it. Strawberry and cream. Because it's expensive. He said, I like strawberry and cream. But when I go fishing, I put a worm. What do you call worm in Urdu? Kira. Kira dal tahu me. Chu. Because he loves worm. You love worm. You want to catch it? No. You know, the fish loves it. So this is the method that they're doing. It says here, why I became a Christian. Sultan Muhammad Paul. Musalman tha, murtad ban gaya. Uska naam tha Sultan Muhammad, abhi ban gaya Paul. You open the book inside, verses from the Quran. What you're going to do, you're going to kiss it and put it where? Next to the Quran, a snake in the house. He's making you to nurse this because you as a Muslim, I as a Muslim, I can't tear it, I can't burn it, I can't throw it. Allah ka kalam hai andar. Can you see the tricks that they're playing on the Muslims, unwary Muslims of Pakistan? Here, K.K. Alawi, ek musliman or dekho, Maulana sahib, ye murtad ban gaya. Ho sakta hai, ho sakta hai. Look at this. Murtad ban gaya his, and inside you open verses from the Quran. What you do? Kiss it and put it next to the Quran. Look at this. Christian witness among Muslims. Christian witness among Muslims. I will satisfy them all if they want to. Inshallah. <laughs> Christian witness among Muslims. It looks like a Nigerian or a Ghanaian 
is reading the tasbih. Subhanallah, 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 kuch kar raha hai. And at the bottom is written in Arabic, Inna allaha yubashiru ki bi kalimatim minhu ismuhul masih hu isa ibn maryama. Kya karo ke bhai? Boh sa do isko. Oh, kalam e majid se sa rakho. Look at the master stroke of genius. The trickery that they are playing upon the people of Pakistan. And they are planning our destruction. Here. Here is telling you. Here. Look at this. This is a Christian newspaper called Pray. It says Pray. Kingdom of Oil. John Lee. He's supposed to be a Korean or a Chinese. He says here, I am in Saudi Arabia. Just left Kuwait. He gets into Saudi Arabia. He gets into Kuwait. They Allah ka dushman. He can get in. He knows how. They know the tricks of the trade. It says here, only in Indonesia, Lebanon and Bangladesh can be picked up for any kind of substantial effort of evangelism. Only these countries are very, very nice. In the rest of the Muslim world, the gospel has scarcely been shared. It is very simply a virgin land. Preparation is underway in Pakistan. Tayari ho rahi hai Pakistan ki. Population 68,300,000. Well, we, I'm told we are 100,000, 100 million now, inshallah. For the last two years, we have been in contact with six key leaders in the Arab Muslim world to come up with a realistic and workable plan for every home crusade. Dar pa dar jayenge, or sab ke saad vam jihad karenge. Every home crusade. So this year, this year we plan to open a research center in Beirut, Lebanon, to start the preparation for the entire Arab Muslim world. ये हमारी तैयारी कर रहे हैं हमारी तबाही की एंड द शायर इज सेइंग कि वतन वतन की फिक्र करना दाम मुसीबत आने वाली है तेरी बर्बादियों के मशवरे हैं आसमानों में दे आर प्लानिंग योर डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड वी आर बिजी दे आर प्लानिंग अवर डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड वी आर बिजी विद व्हाट विद वन अनदर आई सेड ना व्हाट आर वी डूइंग वी मुस्लिम्स इन पाकिस्तान वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी वल्लाह वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी You see, we eat good food. The Pakistani compared to our brethren in India, we eat gore, ghee, gham, or gosh. All high protein stuff. Where does it go? Energy. We have more energy than any other people. I meet our Pakistanis in UK, in America, and they are ready for a fight, arguments, debates. Here, they are ready for a fight, arguments, debates. Allah has given us so much energy. What do we do with it? You don't identify the enemy. You don't hide it. So now you're looking at me. The question, Shia or Sunni? I want to know how many Shias came to your house to convert you. Did any Shia come to your house? Not to my house. Shia Sunni. What are you? What are you? He says, are you a Tablighi or a non-Tablighi? Right? Are you a Muhajir or are you a Pakhtun? I have been hearing that there's massacres going on. What is this? Because now you are busy. Shaitan hume busy rakta hai. You are going at each other's throats. Ye bhaiya, tabhi itne saad baras ki umar hui. And why don't you keep a beard? Dari kyun nahi rakte? Or aapne dari rakhi hai? Isko zara standard size kar dalo. Ye kya nasara ka kapra pehente hain? You are busy. You know? We are busy, busy, busy. Dua pahni, zor se ke aishte se. Haat uthana ke nahi uthana. Salami or no salami. We are busy, busy, bashing each other, busy. Why? Because you don't identify the enemy. I said, look, find out who's stealing your children. It's not the Tablighi. It's not the Pakhtun. It's not the... Look, identify your enemy. Who is doing what? And if you are blind, it looks like you'll remain blind. Look, open your eyes. On kya kar raha hai, what they are planning. Our destruction. And see to it that you put your thinking caps on and give battle. Yes, now, my son. My name is Rizwan Kadri. Rizwan? Uh, Rizwan Kadri, Mr. Didat, sir, the Bible is not God's word. Which is then the Injil that every Muslim should fundamentally believe in? A very good question. You see, the Bible is not the word of God. Then which is the Injil that we believe in? Which is supposed to be the word of God? We believe, we are told, we believe, we accept, we believe in the Torah, we believe in the Zabur, we believe in the Injil and we believe in the Furqan. Furqan is the Quran. We believe in four heavenly books. Torah, Zabur, Injil, Furqan. Now, where is the Torah? Where is the Zabur? Where is the Injil? This book I gave you 
explains that. But since you have asked the question, I will answer. You see, the Torah, we must have it clear in our mind what we are talking about. When we say Torah, Torah is the Wahi, the revelation Allah gave Hazrat Musa. That is the Torah. The Wahi, the revelation Allah gave Hazrat Musa was from him, and we call it the Torah. That which Allah gave Hazrat Dawud is the Zabur. That which He gave Hazrat Isa is the Injil. And that we gave to our Nabi Karim is the Holy Quran, the Furqan. Now, he asked about the Injil. So ask the Christians, where is this Injil, the revelation of Jesus? Ask him, the Christian. So he shows this book. He gives you this book, the Bible. And he says, now, all this is here. So they have divided this book into two portions called the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament in the Arabic version, they call it Kitabul Kadim, Purani Kitab. And the New Testament they call Kitabul Jadid, means the new book, New Testament. Then the New Testament they have got Injile Matthew, Injile Marcus, Injile Lucas, Injile Yohanna. Injile Matthew, Marcus, Lucas, Yohanna. So I'm asking, where is Injile Isa? <laughs> you see, it's very simple. It's very simple. Look, we are getting caught out because we are getting trying to be too clever. I have seen learned people, learned people, professors of English and Arabic. They want me to deliver talks in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia and the UAE. While I'm speaking in English, they want to translate simultaneously. It's not, I can't do it. But they say, no, you must do it sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph. So at times they say, no, this is how it must be done. So I have to appease my Arab brethren. I said, all right. So I said, now the subject is what the Bible says about Muhammad. So the translator, a professor, he says, he says in Arabic, I can just follow. I can't speak it myself. He said, the subject is what the Injil says about Muhammad. I said, Yahi. I know the word Injil, he said, which I didn't say. I said, I didn't say Injil, I said Bible. So he corrects it. He said, what the Torah says about Muhammad. I said, Yahi. I didn't say Torah, I said Bible says about Muhammad. Now he doesn't know what the Bible is. The Bible is not the Torah, the Bible is not the Injil. So you're getting caught out without any of this thing. You put your neck in and you want to have it chopped off. And you don't know why I'm getting into difficulties. I said, the Bible is the Bible. Bible means a book. Come to the Greek word, Biblos. Biblos means book. Kitab. That's what it means, a kitab. So why don't you, he says kitab and you say Torah. He says kitab and you say Injil. You're making a fool of yourself. So we are believing in what Torah, Zabur and Injil, is what Allah gave to Hazrat Musa a.s., Hazrat Dawud a.s., and Hazrat Isa a.s. Not what was given to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And this was not even given to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Out of the four Gospels, these four Injils, the two of the Gospel writers, Mark and Luke, were not even the disciples of Jesus. Jesus went and selected 12. These two were not one of those. So 40-50% is already out. Then the Bible says, these Gospels, they said the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the Gospel according to St. Mark, the Gospel according to St. Luke, the Gospel according to St. John. I said, ask him, what is according to, according to, according to? Why you say according to? If this is Matthew's Injil, say Matthew's Injil. Why you say according to? Because Matthew didn't sign his name, Mark didn't sign his name, Luke didn't sign his name, John didn't sign his name. These are anonymous books. No signature of anybody, no names whatsoever. They just thought, put Matthew, put Mark, put Luke, put John, and Jesus did it. I said, now all this knowledge is given to you in a nutshell, pre-digested. You, you learn it, master it, and you go to town, and there isn't a Christian born who can stand before you. Yes. As you are aware, sir, uh, today the Muslim ma is faced with the threats of world imperialism, whether it is red imperialism or black imperialism, the world Zionism, and the, at this time, the Christian religion is a dying religion. It's a Sunday religion. It's no more an active religion, even in Europe or in America for that matter. 
But uh, what is the problem today? Why should we go for a lesser evil when we have got the bigger evil? Don't you think with the, the I mean, uh, this attacking the lesser evil, that's the Christianity, we are just uh, uh, trying to uh, sort of uh, take the looks away from the bigger evil, that is the imperialism, the Zionism, and things like that? I think it's a bit of a, a winded thing. You see, in Seattle, what, what's going on? You have the 200,000 Christians. There are cities in Pakistan with an average population of more than 100,000 Christians each. There on the border with India, you have 200,000. Now, see, what you have to do is you have to either win them over or they will eternally remain. Uh, excuse me, what I, what I want to do now, excuse me, please, brethren, brethren, listen to me, all of you. Look, if there are any Christian brethren, please give them a chance first. Look, like this is going to carry on. Please, the Muslims, please go and sit down. Muslims, please go and sit down. I beg you, if you are a Muslim, go and sit down. <laughs> ah. We will be given a chance. You see, in Sialkot, I delivered a talk like this. At the end of the talk, you know, we made our salat, we had our dinner, and now it's about time to go to the resting place, hotel, not the graveyard to the resting place, and as I'm going out, going to the car, a gentleman, well-spoken, he says, Mr. Didat, he drew my attention, he said, is there any benefit in having these munazaras, you know, with swagat, with sharosh, with gram, and all this talking and talking, the people come and argue and debate with you, is there any benefit in that? Now, he wants me to start telling him what are the benefits. In other words, I must tell him and give him another lecture. So I'm asking him rather, a shortcut I took. I said, look, you were there for two hours. Did you derive any benefit at all from it? He said, no, look, you don't ask me, I'm asking you. You answer me. You don't ask me questions. I said, that's amazing. Look, I said, if you came here, sat for two hours, and if you didn't benefit, next time when I come, don't come anywhere near me. Don't waste your time. But ask these people whether they benefited at all. He said, why should I ask them? And the people were also terrified. Nobody wanted to own up, saying that they benefited. Nobody. Something surprising. I said, what's wrong? All these people are, what has happened to them? Burnt dumb? So afterwards, I'm finding out from the people. I said, look, what was this man? This man said he didn't benefit. And all the rest of you are just keeping blood. I said, no, no. He is a big industrialist here. Bara Pahalwan here. You see, he's got a German wife. He married a German wife, a missionary, and his house is the center of Christian propagation in Sialkot. Now you see, in your midst, your own people are being used. This man, Bola Pala, Bewakuf. Bola Pala, I'm looking at the Bola Pala, Angrizi, look at the simpleton. You think tons of simplicity. Actually, it means Bewakuf. Bloody fools. You know, we go along and get this white wife, and we say, don't convert her, because Islam allows to marry Jewesses and Christian women. And you leave them where they are, and you say you love them. Yes, you say you love them. One of our sisters was thinking, what is it that they're going to go to hell? Look, Allah says that this dear wife of yours, you say you love her. She believes that Jesus is God. Allah says she's going to go to hell. And your children going to church with her, they'll all go to hell. And you say you love her. It's not you love her, it's the sex that you get from her which satisfies you. It's not love. Okay? Your wife, your child is going to have the slightest hurt. And if you love, you'll go all out to risk your life to save your child, to save your wife. But this woman, you believe that she's going to go to hell and you do nothing about it. And you say, Islam allows. I'm telling my brother and her, don't tempt providence. You are playing with fire. You see, I won't go into lengthy stories about what you can and how you can do, but don't do it. Unless you can make this woman a better Muslimah than your mother at home, a better Muslimah than your sister at home, a better than your sister-in-law, I says, don't tempt providence. Yes, my son, your question. So my name is Terence, and I'd, I'd like to put three questions in front of you. No, please do one at a time. <laughs> All right, sir, I'll wait for my next turn. Uh, firstly, is this that uh, you're using the Bible to uh, show that, or prove uh, Islam, is it right? And if uh, it is true that since uh, 
all the religions uh, end up with a prophet and they tell you about the next prophet who will come back again to help them again. So how about Bible, since you are quoting it and since uh, what I see from it that uh, you are quoting it and uh, like its authority and where, where do we find it that um, Muhammad is to be the next prophet? If not, then how are the Christians to be blamed? Thank you. You see, as I said again, this book I gave you, it explains everything. It tells you, you see, there are in the Bible, now, we said now, it is not Torah, it is not Zabur, it is not Injil. <coughs> that thing is settled. Now, so what is the Bible? So, I am explaining to you in this book. Look, all ready for you, pre-digested. I am explaining it to you, that in the Bible, you have the word of God. The word of God is in the Bible. The Bible is not the word of God. I Means the book is not the word of God. That inside, the word of God is there to be found. In the book, you'll find the word of the prophet. In the book, you'll find the word of the historian. In the book, you'll find many other things besides. So I give you examples. Again, you see, not just talking, I give you examples. That in the Bible, there is the word of God, which anybody with little sense can recognize. For example, in the book of Isaiah, you read the Christian. You read, he said, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Now, so who's talking? The Jews say it's God. The Christians say it's God. The Muslims say God. See, the words we heard were from the lips of Isaiah. But these are not his words. He's only quoting, I, I am God and there's none else. I am God and there's none like me. Right? But he's not claiming divinity. He's only uttering God's commands. He's being used as a mouthpiece of God. You don't have to be a theologian or a priest to recognize that. God is talking. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18, God says, I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Who is this I, I, I? Ask any Jew, he says God. Ask any Christian, he says God. Ask the Muslim, he says, well, it looks, sounds like God. And it is God's word. Like that, you'll find many verses in the Bible, which you and I, anybody, just being uh, not prejudiced, you just with an open mind, you look at the book, you say, no, God talking, God talking, God talking. Beautiful. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible, where a prophet of God is speaking. Like for example, Jesus Christ, he tells his people, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, who is this I? Jesus. It has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this I? Ask the Christian, it's Jesus. It has been said by them of old time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, so who is this I? He says, Jesus. That's right. These are the words of a prophet of God. You saw now, the word of God sounds different. The word of the prophet sounds different. You don't have to be a theologian. A DD, Doctor of Divinity, to understand this. Simple, simple. There is another type of evidence in the Bible which reads, while he was going forth into the way, he, referring to Jesus, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he, Jesus, came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon, but when he came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's talking? It's not God, it's not Jesus. An eyewitness, or a ear witness, or somebody speaking from hearsay. Suni hui baat. While he, wo gaye the jab, unho ne jab jhar ko dekha, wo wo uske paas gaye, uske upar kuch nahi tha. Because, who's talking? Not God, not Jesus, but a historian, eyewitness, ear witness, or somebody speaking from hearsay. There's three different types. Then there is a fourth type, which no decent man can read to his mother, or sister, or wife, his fiancée, I mean, if she's a good woman, you can't. And I challenge this Jimmy Swaggart in America. I said, look, I challenge you to read Ezekiel chapter 23 to your audience. Because I know nobody can read this to his mother, his sister, his daughter, and even to his fiancée if she's a good woman. 
And he came after me as if he never heard. But I had offered him one hundred dollars. I said, if you read that to your audience, I give you one hundred dollars. He didn't read. And I was telling him, I said, look, this is an insult. But I don't mean to insult you. To offer this man hundred dollars, you know what it means? This man, his daily budget is one million dollars a day. I said, in your book, Roman Catholicism, you said there that you need $290,000 a day to keep your head above water. That was in that certain book, little booklet. Yeah, yeah. These booklets like these. Roman Catholicism, $290,000. Then I said, in your evangelist of December 1985, you say, now you need $1 million a day. You know what it means? It's one man. $1 million a day. The whole Muslim world put together with all our petrol dollars. We can't spend that much in a year. This is how good we are. Zakat dete hain, lilla dete hain. Having a jolly good time. The whole Muslim world put together. This is one man job. One million. And I'm offering him hundred dollars. I said, look, I don't mean to insult you. I'm a poor man. I'm only showing you my earnestness. I mean business. Hundred dollars. So he didn't. Then at question time, somebody prodded him. So look, this guy was offering you hundred dollars, why didn't you take him up? So now he's forced to read. So he took that form on which the whole chapter is on. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 23 from the New International Version of the Bible. Ready. Watch. Get the tape and you watch. He's reading. Then he turns it upside down and he puts it down. Upside down. Then he takes his Bible and he opens it and he reads and he read. At the end of it, he says, Mr. Didat, you Muslims are good people. Come on. So I took out the money and I gave it to him. I lost the bet. I lost it. We won the debate. We lost the bet. So an Arab student in Louisiana at the university in the town, next day he's asking me, Uncle, what was the joke? You know, you said something and uh, you offered some money and this guy, you know, he read and he got $100. What was the joke? What was the fun? What was this all about? I didn't catch it, anything. I said, my son, I don't blame you. I said, you see, your English is not up to much. You learn vocabulary and grammar before you came to study. You're going to study science and you'll go back qualified. But colloquial English, colloquial American, you can't catch the joke. It takes much longer for you to grasp what the guys are laughing about. You see, words you know, grammar you know, but what they're laughing about, very difficult to catch. Number one, difficulty with, your, with the language. Mm -hmm. Number two, I said, that man, he was reading archaic English, means old-fashioned English, from the King James Version. Archaic, old-fashioned. I gave him a new international version where they call a spade a spade. That means the children, everybody will understand that this is what's going on. That guy is talking a flowery language and the flesh was as the flesh of asses and the issue was like the issue of horses. Nobody catches the joke that this is what's going on. Filthy, dirty things he's talking about and his flesh was as the flesh of asses and his issue was like the issue of horses. You don't catch the joke. Number three, I said he was reading 60 miles an hour. Son of man, there were two women, that was the one mother, and they committed hordens in the youth, they committed hordens in Egypt, they were the press press, and they the bruised the cheeks of the virginity. Say, cat, cat, what, what is he saying? And before you can, what is he say, hordem, hordem, what? Eh? But he's gone 25 miles. He's reading 60 miles an hour. And number four, I say pornography is no pornography to the American. Day and night you see it on your TV. You know, 24 hours a day, pornography, we naked women, sex taking place in your bedroom. The other guy, your TV, is in your house. 24 hours a day. So you're not getting shot at all. These are your problems. But in the East here, I dare not read it to you. If there are Christians who want to, I say, come, come. I give you 100 rupees. Come and read it to the people. It's your Bible, your language. Come and read it. It's filthiest, dirtiest, religious book. Book of, full of pornographic material. Book of incest. So I got is telling us about incest. Here, here, here are the books. Incest. Look, these are the books he's written. Some of them. Sodom and Gomorrah. Palmelut, Sodom and Gomorrah. He writes beautiful things. Beautiful condemnation. Strong language. In the end, he says to America, he says, America, says, God will judge you. 
if God doesn't judge you, he might have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for what he had done to them. قوم لوت کو اس کو معافی مننی پڑے گی کہ میں نے انصاف کیا تم کو پورنوگرافی ہی گیوز یو ہیئر ان دس بک ٹین ڈفرینٹ کیسز آف انسٹ آئی ڈی نو ان دا بائبل ہولی بائبل There are 10 cases of incest. You know what is incest? All you all know what is incest? I hope you do. Those who don't, tell to those who don't. You see? <laughs> tell them. Look, incest, you go with somebody else's wife or daughter, that's adultery, zina. But you go and sleep with your mother, that's incest. You sleep with your daughters, that's incest. You sleep with your daughter-in-law, is incest. You sleep with your sister, is incest. There are Five cases of incest in the first book of the Bible. Pehli hi kitab hai, pehli surah ke andar paanch incest cases hai. Not the same case repeated five times, but different cases of incest. I didn't know. Jimmy Swagat tells me that. That in the whole Bible, ten cases of this type. Brother and sister, father and daughter. You know, sister raping his, a brother raping his sister. Father-in-law cohabiting with his daughter-in-law. Father cohabiting with his daughters. 10 cases. Now, this is what they're offering you. I said, take it. Uh, people have been asking whether the name Muhammad is in the Bible. This is what he was questioned. So I got it. And he said, Lou, there is nothing like that. People talk. Next night, I delivered a lecture on Muhammad in the Bible in response to Swagat. What he said in, answer, in the same time. Of course, Swagat didn't turn up. But in response to Swagat. And there I prove to the audience, you get the tape, Muhammad in the Bible in response to Swagat. There you'll find the name Muhammad is mentioned by name. The Christian says, not in my Bible. I said, what Bible have you got? He said, the English Bible. I said, did Jesus speak English? He says, no. I said, look, I want to know what he said. You got the Zulu Bible. You got the Urdu Bible. Did Jesus speak Urdu? Did he speak Zulu? No. Moses, did he speak Zulu? Urdu? No. I said, look, in the Hebrew Bible, in the Hebrew manuscript, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, in Hebrew, go and check it up. If you don't know, go and find a Hebrew scholar. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, In Hebrew, Hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei baina Jerusalem. The word there is muhammadim, which they translated in English as altogether lovely. So altogether lovely, that's not Muhammad, is it? No. Muhammad means the praised one. Let's say in our history, in our books. Wherever the name Muhammad occurs, some tyrant comes and removes it all. And we say only the praised one, the praised one, the praised one. In a thousand years, maybe we won't know that the name of the praised one was Muhammad. See, Muhammad means the praised one. Muhammad must be retained. You have no right to translate it into another language. They translated the word Muhammadim. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. Muhammad, altogether lovely. Now, this is the sickness the Christian has. He wants to translate names of people. which you have no right to do. Look, Jesus. You know Jesus' his name was not Jesus. I've been talking whole night. I keep on saying Jesus, Jesus, but that was not his name. When he was born, his mother named him Esau. In Arabic, Isa. Hebrew, Esau. Classical Hebrew, Yeheshua. Then where does Jesus come from? It comes from the Latinized Hebrew word. Latinized, they want to make it sound like Roman or Greek, not Jew. Esau sounds Jew, Yehudi. They don't want the God to be a Jew. They want him to look more like a Roman or a Greek. So they change it to Jesus. Christ. Christ never heard the word Christ in his life. In his second coming, if he came to Karachi, and if the, if the Christians of Karachi recognized him, and said, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. I'm telling these poor Christians that he won't even look back at you. <laughs> he won't. You know why? Because he never heard the word Jesus Christ in his life. 
He never heard the word Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Latinized form of the Hebrew word Esau. Christ comes from the Hebrew word Messiah, Arabic Masih means anointed. Masa, Masih, Masa karte hain, Namaz karte hain, Huzu karte hain, Masa karte hain. Masa means to rub over, to anoint. In Hebrew, it means the same thing. Arabic means the same thing. Masa means to rub over. Priests and kings were anointed in consecration to the office. From today, you are our Imam. From today, you are our Bishop. From today, you are our ruler, our king. They did that. So, Messiah means one who is rubbed over. They translated that into Greek, Christos. Christos means anointed. Messiah means anointed. Masih means anointed. So they translated to Christos. But Christos was too long for the God. So they cut off the us. They left with Christ. But Jesus never heard the Christ word Christ in his life. I'm challenging the Christians, come, come, man. I prove it to you that he never heard the word and is not likely to hear unless he's God Almighty. Can you imagine? Peter, the name Peter, Peter never heard the word Peter. His name was Simon. He was a hard-headed fellow, you know, ever ready for a fight. Like the Irishman, there's a fighting Irishman, or like the Pathan. <laughs> with apologies, with apologies. You see, he was a fighting type of fellow, ever arguing and debating, ever wanting to put up a fight. So Jesus said, Simon, thou art Kephas. In Hebrew, Kephas means a rock was to ke patthar jasahetu. Thou art Kephas, and on this rock I'll build my church. On this foundation of your sternness, the stubbornness, I'll build my church. What did he say? He said in Hebrew, Kephas. So they translated to Greek, there's a Petros, from which now they have the word Peter. But poor Peter, he doesn't know that he's Peter. <laughs> Amazing situation. Can you see? But now, because we don't know, these guys are coming and making rings around us. If you know, you say, hey, hey, where did you get it? Jehovah. Where did you get the word Jehovah from? Jehovah's witnesses are working from Islamabad. Do you know that? No, we don't understand. Pakistani, we don't know what from Islamabad, the Jehovah's Witnesses are working. How do I know? Well, one of our Quetta, one of our Pakhtun, the Baluchi brother, he sees an advert in the Philippines, newspaper, he writes to the Philippines, and he gets a response from Islamabad. And he gets literature from Islamabad. He's writing from here to the Philippines, and he's getting the response from Islamabad. Ah, brothers, yes, your question. Yes. I'd like to start by saying that I'm a Roman Catholic priest. I'm Father Archie D'Souza. I earlier sent you a question in from the National Catholic Seminary in Gulshan Iqbal. It was written to you, but you didn't read out the whole question. I would like to state two things, sir. Firstly, as a Roman Catholic priest and, as, and you as a kind of leader of the Muslim community, we both have certain responsibilities. Responsibilities before God. And that responsibility is that we share the spirit of our religions with others. We don't speak of conversion. We don't speak of making numbers. I have just come from a meeting in Rome with both Muslims and Christians present, where the topic was mission and dawah. Mission and? Dawah, the Arabic da'wah. word for mission. Da'wah. Now, in that particular group, there were 18 Muslims from all parts of the Muslim world and 18 Christians from all parts of the Christian world. The purpose being that we learn to dialogue with one another, that we try to find the spirit of our religions, that we don't point fingers at one another through tafsir, where perhaps the other in his own faith does not quite understand it from the other points of view of the other person's faith. I've been hearing you for the last two hours now saying different things about Christianity from your point of view. Many of those points I could debate, I could question, but this is no audience or no forum for that. What I'd rather suggest is that we should be concerned about spreading the spirit of our religions. For me, the spirit of who Jesus Christ means for me. For you, what the spirit of Islam as a religion of peace bought by the Prophet Muhammad and settled to the people of Arabia and now the Muslim world what it means for you. In that way, I think we can learn 
to live in peace and harmony with one another, we can learn truly to be part of God's people on the way to whom you call Allah Ta'ala. I think that's part of the message also of Islam in view of the Akhirat, is the part of the Christian message in view of the life to come. And I think if we really want to live in peace and harmony in our world, the message of peace is more important than really picking points of tafsir or points of theology. A purpose being that both we Christians and Muslims learn to live in peace and harmony with one another, understanding the spirit of our religions and not to tear one another apart. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I think Dr. Ronnie D'Souza must be your father. The Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Ronnie D'Souza. No, he's an old priest, and that's why he couldn't come. He also suffers from death. But he's, he sent this thing to me, no, yes, questions but that he wanted me to answer. He's just another Roman Catholic priest. Yes, retired Roman Catholic priest. But he, he took the trouble of sending this to me for me to answer at the meeting. No, no. You got time for all that to give another lecture now. If he was here, he would have been the first man. You see, it's very easy for people to talk about dialogue. His Holiness the Pope, if you know, I'm sure you do know his movements. When he went to Turkey, he said, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. When he went to Nigeria, he said, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. When he went to Kenya, he said, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. And I was waiting for people to have a dialogue because nobody knows about this dialogue you're talking about. These people here, they never heard about 80 guys gathering there in Rome, Vatican, and they had a dialogue. What did you discuss? Any of you know? So this is... Please, please, please keep quiet. So the people, the whole world, they don't know what is going on in the Vatican. You had those 80 Muslims, 80 Muslims, yes. You fed them well, you looked after them, and we say, mashallah, you must have done a beautiful job. You see, when His Holiness, He made these suggestions, wherever He goes, He's talking about dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. So I wrote to His Holiness, I said, Your Holiness, you're talking about dialogue, I'm prepared to come and have a dialogue with you in St. Peter's in Rome at the Vatican, at your time and convenience. No reply. So I wrote another letter to him. No reply. I sent him a telegram. No reply. I sent him another telegram. You have your secretariat there. Maybe the Pope doesn't see all these things that's coming in, but the people are there, not dead. No reply. The, for, the second telegram, I get a reply. That His Holiness is prepared to receive me in the secretariat. That means in private. So I wrote that to him. I said, look, this is not a matter between Ahmad Didat and the Pope. This is a matter between Islam and Christianity. There are a thousand million Muslims and 1,200 million Christians who would be interested in knowing what is going on between Ahmad Didat and the Pope. And Muslims, my people, my younger generation from Durban, Johannesburg and Cape Town, they want to charter three planes. People from the UAE, they want to come. People from the UK, they want to come. And the Christians themselves, the news media, the TV media, everybody wants to cover it. How big is your secretariat? No reply. Again, a telegram. No reply. Another telegram. No reply. Until as if from heaven. You know Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel. He doesn't come anymore. But as if by, from heaven. Somebody had a, a pamphlet there just now. Let me have a look at it. Yes, yes. This is it. This picture, can you see this picture? This is a genuine picture, untouched by human hands. Can you see this picture? Can you see the picture? This is His Holiness, the Pope. What is he doing? This is what is called hide and seek. Where is the reverend? Wow. Yeah, have a look at it. Have a closer look at it. No, I'd like to explain rather. No, no. Look, this rather is, than hear your this interpretation. Is, I'm still answering. I'm still on my feet. 
if you look, we uninterrupted hearing we gave you. Though it was supposed to be question time, you delivered a sermon and we gave you a, you delivered a sermon and we gave you a fair hearing. Now, this is a debate. Now what you're trying to do is now you want to debate. No, I'm not debating, and, uh, sir. Look, I'm spirit, just making the observations. The spirit you have come back to the mic when I'm not finished with it yet. This is the spirit of debate. And if you want to debate, Father, look, I'm open. Any, any Roman Catholic father wants to debate with me in Pakistan, anywhere, you call me and I'll come along and debate with you. But let me finish. These are all new, new faces coming up now. <laughs> okay, right. So as this, this picture came from heaven, and some poet in Pakistan described it, Look, this is as if you're going to play hide and seek. He's playing hide and seek, His Holiness. Look at this. In other words, this is actually what he's doing to the Muslims. Now, this game is a very old game. These Christians are playing upon us and are catching the Muslims out left, right, and center. Bhole bhale musalman. See, bhole bhale in English they call simpletons. Simpletons, you think. Simpleton means tons of simplicity. That's what you think. It means bewakuf. Bewakuf musalman. Simpleton. <laughs> right. So, listen to this. So, talking about dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. Does he mean dialogue? I'm telling him that the Bible says, come let us reason together in the book of Isaiah. The Quran says, Qul, ya ahlal kitab ta'ala. Let's come to common terms. Get us onto a common platform. Yes, the Bible says so, the Quran says so, and His Holiness says so. So let's have a dialogue. No, 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 no. They don't mean dialogue. What they mean is go and convert the Muslims. But if they use the word convert, you're going to react. So this is a diplomatic way of telling the people go and convert the Muslims, but call it a dialogue. Now these Muslims are being made fool of. Look, Allah is telling you to have a dialogue. About what? What were they talking? I want to know. Ask them. Anybody apart say, what have you been talking? Allah says, Ya halal kitab, O people of the book, Ta'ala, come. Ila kalimatin sawa in bainana wa bainakum. That we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. And what about what? He says, number one. Allah na abuda illallah that we worship none but Allah wala nushrika bihi shay'an and that we associate no partners with him wala yattakhiza ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min dunillah and that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah fa in tawallaw fa kullu shadu bi anna muslimun but if they turn back tell them that we are muslims we have submitted our wills to the will of Allah what are we going to talk about number 1 Allah na abuda illallah. Start with that. Allah says, start talk about that. Not about the price of tea in Pakistan or the price of onions in China. He wants you to talk about Allah's unity. So he said, we also believe in one God. So look, Allah says, believe in one God. He said, we believe in one God. He said, what God? He says, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Allah says, tell them, Wala takulu salasa, don't say Trinity, in tahu khairal lakum, this is stop it, it'll be better for you. In Allahu ilahu wahid, for your Allah is one Allah, he's not three in one. This is the dialogue Allah is telling you to have. But what do you have? The guys are making monkeys out of you, left, right, and center. You read a book, Muslim, Christian Mission and Muslim Dawa, published by the Islamic Foundation. It'll cost you two pounds. They had a this thing in 1975 in Chambisi in Switzerland. All the Christian giants and the Muslim giants, they had this dialogue for how many days and they passed resolutions. How not to steal each other's children, how not to steal. Not what to do, what not, how not to steal. So telling the Christians, look, don't adopt this unfair means in the guise of education, in the guise of medicine, please don't do that. This is what the Muslim is crying. He is not talking what Allah is telling him. And they too, they say, you see, look, your Muslim countries, in Saudi Arabia, we have no chance to go and preach openly. In the Arab countries, we have no chance. Please, talk to them. Is that what Allah is talking, talking, telling you to talk about? No. But they made monkeys out of them, and after 10 years, they took out a book, the Islamic Foundation in Leicester. 
they say immediately they left the continent. The Christians started a multi-million dollar project among the Fulanis in Nigeria against the resolution they had passed. So what they're doing to you with these dialogues? Achha, achha, khana khelate hain, chai pilate hain, and then he said, we are very good people, you are all very, very nice, we are hypocrites. All. Hypocrisy. Playing and they're making a fool of you and getting the better of you. Because, bhole bhale musalman. Then, I was in Birmingham. Dr. Abdullah Nasif of the Rabita, he's there. We're having lunch together. Sitting with me, he says, Ahmad, what happened about that dialogue with the Pope? So I explained to, to him what I was explaining to you just now. He says, you know, the Pope did it to me. I said, what did he do? He says, you know, he called me for a dialogue. Dr. Abdullah Nasif of the Rabita, World Muslim League. He said, they also called me and I went. Bhole bhale musalman. He went. And he said, they made me to sit in a waiting room. I sat, expecting the Pope to come. Then, after five minutes, they took me to another waiting room, a better quality. I sat there waiting for the Pope. Lika Allah. Astaghfirullah. As if you're going to see the Almighty now. He didn't come. He took him to another waiting room. Higher grade. Suspense. In comes the Pope. Very humble man. Most psychological. Beautiful. Look, everybody loves him. He's a master psychologist. When he came to Pakistan, where he landed in Islamabad, he made the sujood. He put his head on the foreground and the Muslims of Bole Bale Musalman ke tabai sizda kya iste. Ha, hamari zamaat, amin ta sizda kya. He only needs a gentle push. Zara, usko zara, dhakka marenge to Musalman ban jayega. When he goes to India, he kisses the ground. The Hindus are happy, blessing my land. The Hindu is happy, the Christian is happy, the atheist, everybody is happy, master psychologist. So he receives Dr. Abdullah Nasir. Ahlan was ahlan. I don't think he said that. But welcome. So you come from Egypt? He says, no. Maybe he was fishing for somebody from Egypt. He said, no, I come from Saudi Arabia. He said, you know, you don't allow us to build churches uh, in your country. So Abdullah Nasif had the presence of mind. He said, you allow us to build mosques in the Vatican? He says, no. I mean... <laughs> he said, no, no. In other parts of the country, in Saudi Arabia, he said, look, we allowed you freedom of religion, freedom of worshipping. But what you have been doing, you are making each and every one, one of them a center of propagation for your religion. Now from those centers, we give you freedom. You want to catch the Sri Lankan there. You want to catch the Koreans there. You want to catch the Filipinos there. Is this the dialogue Allah is telling you to have them? <laughs> then I go to Malaysia. Tunku Abdul Rahman, the old man, the ex-prime minister, the old man. I meet him and this was news. Dialogue, dialogue with the Pope. He said, Ahmad, what happened? So I tell him what I told you. He says, you know, Ahmad, he did it to me also. He's doing it to everybody. He's making monkeys of everybody. I said, what did he do? He said, he called me for a dialogue. And I went. He said, bole bale musulman. And we went. He said, I went. So as soon as I met him, he says, you know, my people, some Roman Catholic priests were caught in Sabah, trafficking in drugs, very serious kind, in Malaysia. So he said, look, can't you intercede with the Sabah government to let our people go? Is that the dialogue Allah is talking to about? <laughs> huh? Can you see? They're making monkeys out of our people left, right and center. Allah is telling you, have a dialogue with him, but about Allah's unity, that you know shirk, they're doing shirk. But no Muslim dare talk to the Pope or the Christian like that. No Muslim dare. Why? Because we are an emasculated people. Sab khassi ban gaya, khassi. Yes, emasculated. Allah is telling you what to talk, but you're too clever. Because you're too clever, you're getting caught out. Uh, sir, <coughs> I'm Andita, sir. Uh, my name is Makbul. Mahmoud? Uh, Makbul in Riyaz. Are you Muslim? No, Christian. Yeah, you see, because but, the names today means nothing. Yeah. You know, I tell you, most deceptive, you know, most deceptive. Yeah. I have come across names, Major Nasir, you think he's a Muslim, and you're talking about a Muslim, but he's a Christian. He is the Adu Allah wa Adu Akum. The greatest enemy is trying to steal your children, but you think he's your brother. Ahlan wa Sahlan. Go ahead. Okay. Makbul Indriyas. Makbul. Yeah. Sir, when you opened your talk, you opened with derogatory remarks regarding those three gentlemen. A man of your stature, do you think it uh, behoves? What rationale do you have talking about a fellow man like that? 
then also no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You ask the question. One question at a time. Please, if you're going to deliver a lecture, I won't remember what no. you said. No, you made a comment. Let me respond. Yeah. Then you can make another comment. Okay. It's about my tone, about my voice, about what I say. Sounds offensive. I says, you know, whatever I'm talking is insipid. Insipid, tasteless. There's nothing in it. Compared to your Lord Jesus, compared to Jesus Christ, the veritable Son of God, according to you, God in, on earth, how does he speak? He said, you generation of vipers, you snakes. He's talking to his people, the elders of his people. You wicked and adulterous generation, haram core form. He's talking to his people. You hypocrites, you fools, you whited sepulchers. Am I right? Am I quoting correctly? Right. Look, compared to that, Ahmad Bida. Compared to that, I don't know how many marks you're going to give me for virulence. You know? How many? Compared to Jesus. Zero. Right, next question. Okay, I read in the newspaper the other day, only during this week, somebody called, supposed to be a Muslim scholar, said that uh, St. Paul is Satan. Uh, I don't think uh, any Muslim scholar or yourself would call anybody, uh, any man from any religion whom we honor, or they honor, as one of the saints or as one of the apostles. Uh, you build now, mosques. shall I answer that? Look, some Muslim scholar. I am not doubting your, your veracity. But what the Christians are telling my prophet, you know, 60,000 books have been written against the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Do you know that? 60,000. <laughs> Let me read it to you. This is your publication. This is your publication. This is your publication. Listen. Look. This is Mother Basilia Shilink. This woman is writing, Christian woman. Allah or the God of the Bible, what is the truth? This is your Christian publication. Now listen, this Molvi, whatever he said about St. Paul is nothing compared to what you are now telling us about my prophet. You see? He says, thus the two figures, Muhammad and Christ, are the greatest contrast imaginable. Jesus represents love and peace, whereas Muhammad stands for hatred and strife. Now, shh, please, please, I don't want your help. I don't need your help, please. Muhammad, he, uh, Jesus, he is the lamb. Who? Oh, Jesus is the lamb. Gareeb lucky guy. Bakri bachka. He is the lamb. Muhammad, however, stands for violence, having led wars. Campaigns on behalf of the supposed message from Allah, supposed message from Allah. Jesus is the embodiment of sacrifice. Indeed, sacrifice was the essence of his life. He himself became the essence, uh, the lamb that was slain as a sacrifice for the world. Muhammad lived for his self-realization. Please, man, don't want to horrify people, waste your time. Look, Jesus, more than a prophet. This is what you're doing among the Afghan refugees. The Christians, clear people, in trouble, maimed, crippled, amputated, there you take unfair advantage of them. Look at this, 15 Muslims of the Mujahideens, they tell how they found forgiveness, there is a new life in Jesus Christ. How did they do it? Huh? And the priest was saying, we don't go converting people. Who's doing this? Huh? Angels from heaven, who's doing this? Look, look at this. Okay, sir, you speak about evangelizing. Um... Look. The Great Commission, you, 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 so you and the Muslim, you means the Christian, you, this is the Great Commission. What, what he says, look at this, on the way to the cross, your ship, good ship, Dulos, Logos, going and harassing my people all over the world. There, there are a hundred books here, what you are doing to us, what we have done is God, God is my witness, is really nothing, is insipid. You see? So now, you are behaving like a, a, a virgin, a little girl, you know, like a little girl who has been unjustly treated somehow. When the Christian, what have you done? What did you do to the people in the Philippines? What do you do to my people all over the world? And you are talking like lambs, you know, I said, look, we mean no harm. You conquered the whole of Africa. You conquered my nation here, this subcontinent, and you enslaved us for 150 years. No? You Christian, no?
Look, there's too much here. What is your question? Now tell me what no, is your question? The question is, I, I would request the just, uh, you gentlemen to kindly let other body allow. Yeah, I'll just, uh, no, no, this move. is not a session of debate actually. No, sir, it's not debate. Just a question and I'll move away. Uh, in, uh, in Quran, the Prophet said that uh, if you don't understand, consult the al Kitab. And then he referred to Torah, Zabur, and Anjil. If, if it was changed, then the Prophet would have say, uh, you, said... You find, shh, shh, shh. Please, don't waste time. Find this, and I'll deal with it. Come, sit down on this side here. Give somebody else a chance. No, Give him the Quran. Okay. Give him the Quran. I, I don't know the text. Wow. Very small question, sir. Very small question. Very small. Yes, go ahead, young man. Are you a Muslim? No, I'm a Christian, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Would you allow me to speak in Urdu? I can express better. No, I can't. If you didn't understand what I was speaking all this while... No, I can express better. No. Okay, speak I speak in English. Right, speak in English. Okay. Uh, you have been comparing Jesus Christ with many others. I would just like to bring your attention to the Sai Bukhari second volume, page number 740, 13th line that uh, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he confessed that Satan touches everybody when he is born but there were two personalities in this world they were not touched and you referred us to al maidah last chapter I mean uh, 116 verse <laughs> so you said like that so I would like to ask you now, there is a contradiction in two verses and you said that if there is a contradiction in any of the holy book, it is not from God. I am not saying anything and if you want to uh, curse, what, what is please the curse myself. What is uh, the contradiction? I'll, say, I'll tell you. Till he was with us, you know, we, we said that he was God and his mother was God. And when he was not with us, Phila Mutafi. Now, when he died, I would say, then we started making mistakes. Now the question is that your belief is that he is still living and if he is living then we did not make any mistake like and the contradiction is on the other hand oh, just look, a moment. This sir. is not a question. What sir. you are doing now, you are trying to preach to us. I said look what is your question? Sir, I am putting my question. Uh, go, come, come forward man, put your question. Look so many things you touched already which calls for half a dozen different lectures, man. What is your question in a my, nutshell? My Can't you, look, no, you speak so well English, you wanted to apologize when you speak Urdu, what for? Sir? What, no, no, look, what, you're doing a devilish game. You're you playing a devilish game. Sir, you please. speak such good English, you know Arabic so well, and you can't come out with a question. Sir, Ask your question, sir, man. Sir, please, please. Can you let me have, uh, say the question? Look, there is a question time. Sir, your if, father. My friend, I would request you to go. Your father. I, I am not debating, sir. Look, your father. I am not to your wait, level. Wait, what church do you belong to? What church do you belong to? I belong to the Church of Pakistan. <laughs> you see the Munafikin? This is how the Munafiks talk. When you, Church of Pakistan, what does it mean? I said, what church you belong to? I know, sir. There was no church me. in Pakistan before 1947. No, sir. What church? Are you a Roman Catholic or are you a Protestant? What are you? No, sir. If are you, you fish or are you a fowl? What are I, you? Sir, excuse me for one minute, sir. Last time I put the question about Bismillah Rahman Rahim, you never answered me and you just confused me and I went away. And this time again you are not answering my question. And I'll be confused and I'll go away. You see, look, look, the deception that you're doing now. You see, please, sir, please, please. Keep quiet. You know, Jesus said, Jesus said, beware of sheep's clothing. Beware of wolves who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravening wolves. You said, you quoted Bismillah last time. What was the meaning you gave in Urdu? You said Bismillah Rahman Rahim. What meaning did you give? Give now. Bismillah, I shuru karta. Shuru You gave that meaning in Urdu. Last time you gave it in Urdu. You read Bismillah Rahman Rahim and you gave the meaning in Urdu. Give it now. Let the people hear. Shuru karta hu Allah ke naam ke saath. Right. Suna, ye ne sitna kaha ke shuru karta hu main Allah ke naam se. Suna hua hai. Right? Is that what you said just now? Shuru karta hu main Allah ke naam se. That what you said just now? Right. Look, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. There is no word shuru karta hu main. You you pretended as if you know Arabic. 
You know, you quoted the Arabic Quran and you give the meaning as if you understood. But now you're deceiving everybody. You're putting dust in our eyes. Look, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim means in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. It doesn't say, I'm starting in the name of Allah. There is no starting there. So you see, no, please, please, no. Cha Cha Jan, are you Muslim? You, you, well, go and sit down. Are you Muslim? Yes, go and sit down. I don't want Muslims standing here now. <laughs> right. I'm directly talking. Ah. Look, look, my Come a little closer. You see, ask a question, don't ramble, because when you speak about too many things, I have a tendency to forget, then you will think that I'm trying to evade. So look, if you have a question, go for the heart of the matter. Yes, so Mr. D, that the Quran says, wa ma wa ma that they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. But so in the certain book, part of the Quran, it says they did. How did you explain that? Then I will explain. But come like that, please. Make it short. Look, there are people, look, I'm an old man of 70. And I'm on my feet for more than three hours. You know that? I'm one man against a whole lot of you. Look, and I'm still standing on my feet after three hours. It's not fair. We said that was the last question there. There were two. And then another two came, another three came, another four came. And we're still entertaining you. Look, there's not another community on earth that will do that to you. No Christian will give you that facility. But no Christian, no Christian on earth will give you that. But we are charitable. Yes, look, we don't want to get away with it. Please, but come straight forward. Make your point and go and sit down. Ask your question. Yes, sir. We cannot separate the human body with the soul. Sir, you want me to go, sir? Because our brother... Ask the question, please. Yes. We cannot separate a body from the soul because we won't identify the, the life. In the same way, we cannot separate God from His Holy Word. We, the Muslims, say that the Word of God can be recognized through the Holy Prophet as Holy Quran. Now, I would like to ask you, sir, that the Quran is only 1300 years old. How can we say, because God is infinite and He's from the beginning, sir? Yes, yes, carry on, carry on. We'll sir, give you rope now. God Go. is. God Go ahead. Is, God is from the beginning. So his word should be from the beginning. Why is it that the Holy Quran is only 1300 years old? When God, in the beginning, he made a uh, sun for us so that we won't fall, fall down because of the light. Why didn't he give us the spiritual sun so that we might not fall down? Why is it? Okay, uh, I can quote uh, another reference from the hadiths, but I think the people are... They see, this like is the sickness eat. I'm talking about. You see, these people, these you know, subject people, they don't know English. I said, what is the question? He hasn't come to it yet. You know? Look, this is being, being recorded on video. Look, it's being recorded that you are not asking questions. You are making fun, they say that way, and you're carrying on like an eel. You know, look, you haven't asked. Why don't you give somebody else a chance? They might know the art of asking questions. Give somebody else a break. Yes. Come. Who's next? No Muslim. No Muslim. That's all. Cha cha, that's all. That's finished.